Hello everyone, welcome to What If Monk Knight was in high school DXD and Defenders appear special. Chapter 1. Issei Haidu was walking with his girlfriend Yuma Amano in the park at nighttime after their date holding hands. Yuma walks forwards to the water fountain in the park and she turns around to Issei with her hands behind her back skipped towards Issei with a shy smile on her face. Yuma said sweetly, in honor of our first date there is something I want you to do dot as she got closer to Issei, making him blush. Issei thought I'm going to get to kiss totally get to kiss her this rocks dot as he looks at his girlfriend that bound towards him waiting for his response to her request. Isaiah said, sure, go ahead dot as Yuma leans forwards giving Issei a clear view of her face that has a sinister smile which spooked Issei. Yuma said in a mature seductive voice, will you die for me? Causing Issei to look taken back by her request, but he wanted to see if she can repeat it again. Issei chuckled, what you say? Sorry, something must be wrong with my ears, I don't think I heard you correctly dot as he went to clean out his left ear with a single finger and Yuma came closer to his ear with the same smile. Yuma whispered, would you die for me Yuma begins to grow taller, taking on a more mature appearance and her eyes changed, taking on a darker, more evil look. Her clothing also changed dramatically, now consisting of black, strap-like objects, resembling leather, around and under her breasts, a thong-like piece held around her hips by three thin straps, gloves that ran right up her arms with small lengths of chains hanging from them, shoulder guard-like objects on her shoulders with three large spikes sprouting from her right shoulder, and black thigh-high heel boots. Issei thought, isn't this what people call an exhibition? This isn't the time for that. Wings as he falls on his ass looking at his date who just transformed into an angel dominatrix of some kind. Yuma said, haughty, although short-lived, playing innocent lovey dovey with you was fun. I'll take good care of gift from you. Dot as she looks at the pink bracelet on her wrist while Issei looks in fear. Yuma said, so. As her hand stretches out a light spear begins to form causing Issei to pale in fear at the sight of the spear. Issei pleaded, Yuma. Making Yuma smiled a predatory smile at him. Yuma finished, please die. She launches the light spear towards Issei, making him closes his eyes, but before the light spear could hit him, something incited it, along with making a metal clang sound, causing them to snap their attention to see stuck in the ground, was sliver darting in the shape of a crescent moon. This Yuma to look at the weapon in horror, while well, Issei looked at the weapon and confused, but before any words could be said a figure's lands on the top of the fountain in a crouch position, making Yuma slowly turn to her horror, and Issei was s curiosity was an athletic figure dressed in a black bodysuit, that is lightweight plated armor with a crescent moon in the center with a white hood and cape, but what caught Issei's attention was the black mask with two narrowed blue slits, eyes staring at Yuma. Yuma whispered in fear, no, not you dot as the figure stands up now casting a shadow over Yuma, causing her to shudder in fear. The figure announced, now you face Khonshu's champion. The figure jumps in the air and throws several crescent darts at Yuma which clipped her wings, causing her to scream in pain, while Issei winces. Issei thought I know she tried to kill me, but damn. Little did they know they were being watched Bitenjum Kaneko, who was ordered by the president of the occult research club to monitor Issei on his date with Yuma Mano, who was revealed to be a fallen angel, but she got horrified when she saw the white hooded figure show up to save him. Kaneko thought the president will not like this. The white hooded cape charges at Yuma who is holding her wings in pain, but she didn't have time to prepare as the white figure deliver a jab to the face of Yuma, along with followed by an over-the-shoulder arm drag, which put Yuma on her back. The white figure said, submit dot as he pulls out a crescent moon dart to press against the neck of Yuma, who is looking at the white figure in fear and hatred, while Issei looked at him in awe, along with Kaneko. Yuma pleaded, I submit, please let me go dot but the white figure narrowed his eyes, and he pressed the dart even deeper into the neck of Yuma, causing blood to oz out of her neck, making her scream out in pain. Rhea's gremory shows behind Kaneko, causing the normally stoic mascot to jump back in surprise to see the president of the club. But the president jaw nearly dropped to see the fallen angel being held down by a normal people dressed in wired clothing. Rias thought it as him, but I thought he handled normal criminals and strays. Rias and Konkyo continued to watch as the whited figure held down Yuma, who is pleading with the figure to let her go but the figure didn't budge as pressed the dart even deeper in the neck of the fallen angel, drawing even more blood. Issei said, hey stranger, I think you made your point dot which caused the figure to turn towards Issei, along with standing up with the dart that has Yuma blood on it. The figure said, she must pay for her crimes. Yuma took this distraction to take out the darts that are in her wings and take flight, causing the figure to curse silently making him glare at Issei. The Neko asked, President should we confront them? Rhea shook her head signaling not to confront them making Kaneko agree, but inward sigh because she detests the pervert and fears the white figure. Rhea conjures a portal, and the girls walk through it causing the portal to create a flash that grabbed Issei's attention, making him wonder what was that flash of light, but he shrugged it off causing to turn to see that the white figure is gone. Issei said, great I'm talking to myself. Issei walks away with his hands in his pocket, grumbling about the worst date ever. 
Meanwhile, in the apartment room, the white costumed figure was sitting on a couch with one leg over the other leg, leaning back against the couch with a mask on their face, until he used his left arm to take off the mask, revealing a young man with brown hair and silver eyes, with a slightly tan complexion. The young man said, she got away damn it, but at least I saved a say from becoming a devil. The youth get off the couch, and he stands in the living room of the apartment in deep thought of how came to this world. The youth didn't come from the world where creatures of the supernatural are common, but in a world that's similar to the real world, but he was a vigilante called the Moon Knight, similar to his Marvel counterpart, but with a slight difference. Flashback, the youth was patrolling the streets of Chicago in his costume, looking down from the top of a building, inspecting for any signs of criminal activity, but he doesn't, which makes him relax for a little bit as he watches the civilians do their daily routines. His name was Brian Johnson of Chicago, Illinois to two young couples, but on a fateful day, when he 15 his parents were murdered by a mobster who came across them when he was running from the police. Brian's parents were shot to death and he was too, but before he could die, Conchu came to him to give him a chance of living again, but to become the avatar of Vengeance Moon Knight, his favorite comic book character, but with a price as he develops a split personality called Moon Knight. But back to the story, Brian Johnson was pondering about his life and how he ended up becoming Moon Knight of the real world. He remembers almost dying on that fateful, but before he crosses over Khonshu and Spurt came to him with an offer to live again, but with becoming his avatar of Vengeance or Moon Knight, if you are a Marvel fan. Brian found out that Stan Lee based Moon Knight on a legendary Aptane warrior named Atem who was a champion of Nashu, but being the champion has its flaws, as he developed a separated personality like Mark Spector. Brian did too, and the personality name is called Moon Knight, who is cold and vengeful who is currently in control. Moon Knight thought no crime strange. Moon Knight turns to see a blue glowing orb floating towards him, making him get into his stance, as the orb approaches him without doing anything threatening, making him slightly drop his guard. The orb announced in a booming voice. Brian Johnson of Earth 83 your present is needed to decide the fate of the multiverse. Before Moon Knight can give out his argument the orb fires a blue ray that transported him to another plane of existence. Flash back over. Brian sigh as he remembers being browned to the high school DXD world by the orb, which he later found out that was the one above all from Marvel comic. The one above all told him something coming in the multiverse, and him along with a few other are the only ones that can stop the threat. One above all also told that his present is needed here in the DXD world, making Moon Knight think of threats like Akabiel, Lucifer Nemesis, etc. Brian thought no matter who the threat they will suffer the wrath of the Moon Knight daughters, he clenches his hands making them crack. Who Academy Occult Club Room, Rias and her peerage were all at their seat ready to discuss the topics of Issei's survival, a fallen angel on their territory, but more importantly the appearance of the one that called Moon Knight. The club has heard about Moon Knight as he handles regular criminal, but he also handles stray devils and other supernatural creatures, making the three factions wary of him. The Kendo giggled, ar 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 he has been brutal as ever. Making her fellow club members sweat drop because out of everyone in the club, she admires his brutal methods in dealing with criminals and strays. Thibba said, Akeno you may like him, but the rest of us fear him. Making the club excluding Akeno not in agreement to Kiba's statement, because Moon Knight is very ruthless in dealing with criminal or strays proof was when he killed a stray devil without a second thought, making them shivering minus Akeno who gained a rouse look. Rhea said, I was hoping to avoid crossing him, but he is very unpredictable and dangerous for a human dot which made Rhea's wonder if he is even human considering his accolades, making him a candidate right next to Issei to get her out of her marriage with Razor. Pineco said, President I don't think he is human because no human shouldn't have that type of speed or strength. Making Rhea's not along with Kiba, while Akeno kept giggling thinking about Moon Knight's brutal methods. Rhea said, I agree, but let worry about him later because we need to figure what Issei's sacred gear is. Making the rest of the club nodded their heads in agreement because the mystery surrounding Issei's sacred gear is the main priority, but they will keep an open mind on Moon Knight. Rhea's thought I will get my freedom back. Chapter 2, Kuo Academy Issei was walking through the hallway of Kuo Academy with a scowl on his faces as he was covered in bruises after he was used by his friends Mitsuda and Motohama, who watched the kendo girls change, but they used Issei as a scapegoat, causing to take the fall as they escape. Issei thought traitors. As he walks through the hallway he sees a familiar figure leaning against the locker with a bored look on his face, causing Issei to look dumbfounded as he recognizes the figure leaning against the locker. The figure leaning against the locker was an American boy with brown eyes sliver eyes, dressed in the standard Kuo Academy male uniform that barely hides his athletic frame was Brian Johnson or Mr. Knight, as the ladies call him for his gentleman's actions. Brian greeted, hey Issei and damn you look fucked up. As he looks at Issei mocking Issei sigh in sadness, making Brian look at him in confusion, but he sees Issei's bruises, making the young man wince. Brian asked, your friends bailed on you? 
Making a say flinch giving Brian the answer, he needs causing Brian to scowl making a say look dumbfounded as to why the most beloved male a figure second after Kiba would be concerned for a pervert like him. Brian said, look a say it isn't my business to tell you who can be your friends, but you need to drop those sacks of shits dadas. he gives a say a look of seriousness causing a say to think, and he remembers the times of being his friend scapegoat for the times they were peeking on the kendo team. Issei thought, maybe Johnson has a point. Is remembered that his friends take things to the extreme, and he remembers the times of having to stop them before things can escalate, but he would usually take the fall. Issei thought I mean, sure I love female anatomy, but I love a girl with a good personality too. As he thought about his situation, until he decided to make his final judgment, as he sticks his hand out for a handshake for Brian. Issei said, my name is Issei Haidu, and it is a great honor to be your friend Dada's, he smiles as watches Brian grasps his hand completing the handshake, along with giving him a friendly smile as well. Brian said, my name is Brian Johnson, and I will gladly accept your friendship Dada as the two newly made friends grin at each other, which gained a lot of female attention, but it was negative attention as they began to cry. How dare that pervert touches our knight. Be trying to corrupt our knight. Run Mr. Knight. Maybe the pervert can learn a thing or two from Mr. Knight. Brian said, aw shit here we go again. Time to get out of here. As he and Issei bolted from the stampede of girls, but the duo didn't see was Konkyo who was snacking on a piece of chocolate was waking the whole scene. Konkyo thought there is something off about Brian and he smells like Moon Knight, but that should be impossible. After school, Issei is walking through the city with his backpack on his back and he has a smile on his face since he made a new friend in Brian Johnson. He is walking down the city sidewalk careless as people went out their day until he heard a lady scream. Help help help. Issei snaps out of his daze and he hears several sounds of people shouting coming from the alley, making him run to the source of the noise. He several gang members surrounding Caddis who is being held from behind by two gang members making Issei eyes widened. The leader said, come on girly, we just want to have a good time Dadas, he sticks his tongue out and his lips grossing Caddis as she tries to fight out of the hold, but the two gang members won't budge. Issei thought I have to do something. Issei sees trash with the lid still on the top, making him come up with a good plan. The gang leader reaches under Caddis' skirt, but he was hit by a trash can which knocks him to ground holding, making the two gang members let go of Caddis, who was about to run, until she saw Issei holding the trash can lid like a shield, as he is surrounded by the gang members. Caddis said, what are you doing pervert? Run away. As she watches the pervert that she would beat up for peeking on her fellow kendoist along, but right now she is afraid for Issei as the gang members surrounded him. Issei yelled, don't w-o-r-r-t about me and just go. As he hits one of the members with a lid and he is soon over swarmed by the members as they all jumped him. Addis's eyes widened and she runs from the alley to look for a phone booth since her phone is dead. As she was running she begins to think about the Issei and her past action, causing her to feel sick as she would take pleasure in beating him. Addis thought I'm sorry Issei. As she continued to run, but she didn't notice on the roof of a building was Moon Knight who narrowed his blue lens's eyes at her as she runs away with a guilty look on her face. Moon Knight said, something must have happened. As he drops down in front of her, causing cats to fall on her butt looking up at him with surprise and fear as she looks at him. Caddis hears about him on the news about his brutal method of dealing with criminals. Moon Knight demanded, talk. As he looks down at Caddis who gets up from the ground to look him in the eyes, and she points back towards the alley where Issei is located along with flinching as she hears Issei, screams in pain. Caddis said, a classmate of mine's is getting jumped by some gang members who held me against my will but Issei came to my rescue. She let out a few tears making Moon Knight gain a softened gaze, but he remembers he has to save someone. Moon Knight said, find the nearest police station and get help. Moon Knight reaches into his belt to pull out a white grappling gun with a hook connected to it. He aims it at the roof, but before he could pull the trigger, he was stopped by Katz. Pat said, please save and make them dot as she grabs his arm and squeezes it tightly, making Moon Knight look, but he gently removes her arms to look at the roof. Moon Knight said, I will dot as he pulls the trigger, releasing the hook and going up to the roof with Caddis watching in awe, but she remembers she has to go to the police station for help, but she has a feeling Moon Knight is going to clean house. Moon Knight lands on the roof and he leaps over to another building, then he hears the sounds of Issei grunting in pain, followed by the sound of laughter, causing Moon Knight's eyes to narrow again as he leaps over to another building. Moon Knight lands and he looks down to a sight that made him grit his teeth in anger as he sees Issei bleeding from a cut on the side of his head, laying on the ground with the gang members standing over, but they let their leader walk in front of them. The leader said, you got lucky, punk, and it's time to show you why never mess with us dadas, he reaches behind his back to pull out a gun, making Moon Knight scowl behind his mask, along with grabbing a crescent dagger. As the leader pulled the trigger Moon Knight throws the dagger at the leader's hand, causing the gun to drop out of the leader's hands, with a dart stuck in the leader, making the leader scream in pain. 
Moon Knight jump in the middle with his cape covering his body, and he sees the gang members, along with the leader's eyes widened in fear, as they see the violent vigilante who've been making his presence known over the news by his brutal method in dealing with criminals. Moon Knight said, do fires of the innocent face the wrath of the Moon Knight. As he pulls out two crescent darts and he jumps at the nearby gang member to stab him in the eyes with a dart made the member fall the ground with the darts in his eyes. The leader said, get him. As the gang snapped out of their horrified gaze to charge at Moon Knight. Moon Knight takes down some of the gang's members, then he fights some of the remaining thugs until he beats them out, leaving him with the terrified leader of the gang. Moon Knight walks towards him slowly and the leader tries to run, but he falls face forward to the ground and Moon Knight throws a dart at his back. Moon Knight said, you will not escape. As he walks over the leader and he begins to stomp on him making the scream out in pain. Moon Knight hears the police siren and he remembers Issei, so he turns his attention back Issei. Moon Knight said, time to get you out of here my friend Dot as he walks over to Issei and he lifts him over his shoulder, then fires his grappling to launch up to the roof, leaving the unconscious gang on the ground. With Issei, Issei's eyes begin to move until they were completely open as he notices that he is in an apartment along with laying on a couch, but he felt something wrapped around the side of his head, making him feel as he felt a bandage is wrapped around making him confused until he remembers what happened. Issei thought I got jumped, but I hope Caddis got away safely. As he leans back on the couch, but he jumps as he hears the sound of a door creaking. He sees Brian but to his surprise was wearing the Moon Knight costume. Issei asked, BB Brian near Moon Knight. As he points a finger at him, causing Brian to sigh as he was caught by his new friend. Brian gives Issei a nod, making Issei look shocked at his friend's secret but transforming into awe. Issei said, wow, you're like a normal guy like me. As he looks at his newly made friend in awe causing Brian to raise an eyebrow, but he shrugged at Issei and Brian went to grab a chair to sit. Brian said, if you have any questions then let me hear him. As he sits down in his seat as he gives Issei his attention. Issei asked, how did you become Moon Knight? Making Brian flinch, which didn't go unnoticed by Issei which made Issei feel a bit bad. Issei said, you don't have to me if you don't Brian. Making Brian wave him off as he lets out a chuckle. Brian said, well, it's a long story Issei, so get comfortable. Making Issei leans back on the couch as he looks at Issei. Issei said, take your time. Five minutes later, Issei couldn't believe that his friend Brian Johnson was the violent vigilante Moon Knight, but he hears how he became the hero after he and his family were gunned down by a thug, but before Brian could die, he was saved by the god of vengeance named Nosu, who made him his avatar. Issei wanted to believe it impossible, but then again, he saw his date Uma transform into a sick twisted version of an angel. Brian said, there is my origin. Still, think it's cool Issei as he looks at Issei for a response, but he sees Issei's look of sympathy. Issei said, I'm sorry for the loss of your folks. Making Brian pat Issei on the shoulder, causing Issei to feel a little bit at ease. Brian said, well, it's getting late and time for you to head home. As he gets up from his seat, but he sees looking at him with a determined expression, then he jumps from the couch on his knees, surprising Brian. Issei said, please teach me to be like you. As he begs on his knee, which startled Brian as he looks down at his newly made friend and he began to think. Brian asked, why do you want me to teach, and what do you mean to teach you as he looks down at Issei who is now looking up at him. Issei said, I'm sick of being weak, and I want to fight for those who can't fight for themselves. Making Brian raise an eyebrow in interest as he looks down at Issei who now staring at him with a serious look. Brian thought reminds me of my friends from my world. Brian said, I accept, but you must pass my training. Issei said, whatever it takes. Dot as he looks up at Brian, who has the biggest grin on his face which scared Issei a bit. Brian said, good we start soon. Chapter 3. After a full week of training, Issei was able to become a partner for Brian in fighting crime under the name Red Draco. Issei learned self-defense, parkour, stealth, weapon training and interrogation from Brian, who was willing to teach him the skills which Issei was gladly willing to take. Issei gains a more athletic build and he also had an attitude adjustment, but he maintains his love of the female anatomy with slight control. Issei also figures out from Brian why his date tried to kill him, and it was during meditation exercise. Flashback, Issei was sitting in a lotus position with his eyes closed until a red gauntlet with a green jewel and two golden spikes, which caused Brian to look shocked at the gauntlet appearance, along with Issei, who now had his eyes opened as he looks at the gauntlet in wonder. Brian thought the sacred gear has entered the game. Dot as he looks the gear in wonders. Issei asked, what is this? As he touches the gauntlet with his right finger. Flashback over, Brian told him it was a sacred gear and its history with the three factions causing Issei to look at his sacred gear in awe, but he was disappointed that Brian couldn't help him with using its power. Issei meets the dragon that resides in the gauntlet on accident as he went to sleep. 
From what Issa told Brian the meeting was interesting because the dragon half expected a full-blown pervert but got a well-balanced Issa who wanted to become a hero like his new best friend Brian, which made the dragon respect him a bit but he wants to see if Issa can back it up. Brian and Issa were walking the hallway heading home with their backpacks on their back, but they heard the sounds of the female student swoon, causing the two friends to see what the commotion was, but they see Kibayudo, the charming prince of the school, was heading in their direction with his usual smile on his face. Fiba said, Brian Johnson and Issei Haidu please come with me. As he gestures to the occult room down the hall, which made the girls confused as they voiced their opinions. What is our prince doing with the pervert and our knight? I can our knight, but the pervert needs to watch his back if he does anything to piss us off. Come on girls he stops hanging with the other perverts, so cut him some slack. That comment came from Caddis after seeing him risk his life for her see she kinda ease up on him a bit since he stops peeking on the kendo, along with dropping the other perverts to their satisfaction, but some of the girls refuse to accept him. The two friends follow Kiba to the occult room and they see Kiba open the door leading them instead of the room to see the scenery, which made the two look at the room in awe of the design. They see Kakio eating snacks and they see a kendo giggling at them, causing both of them to blush. The Kendo said, Ara 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 my cute little underclassmen are here dot as she giggles at Issei and Brian blushing, but she hears footsteps coming behind her, causing her to snap her attention from the two students to the person coming behind her. The person standing behind her was Ria's Gremory the president of the club. Ria said, welcome to the occult club. As she looks at the two friends with a friendly smile on her face, but the two friends looked at her with a neutral gaze on their face which thrown her off a bit, but she still held her smile. Brian said, thank you for the wonderful tour and let get down to business. Causing Rhea's S smile to drop as a mask of Sirius to take over her face as she looks at the two male students that are part of her plan. Rhea's asked, do you bellows devils? She and her fellow club members look at the two male friends waiting for their answers. Brian said, oh yeah, well, we know you're devils and no, we won't join you. Dottie looks at the club members who have a shocked expression on their faces. Issei snickered at their looks while Brian just looks annoyed as he wanted to just leave school with Issei to patrol the city and look for any trouble either mundane or supernatural, probably the latter since both of the friends want to find out about Yuma who got away. Rhea's asked, HH how do you know? As she looks Brian, who just scowls at her and Issei who is still snickering at her making her more confused which was mirrored by her fellow devils as they wait for an explanation. Brian said, well, for one there shouldn't be an occult club here, and I hear talking about something called a sacred gear. As he smirks at the paling faces of the devils, while they say full blow laugh at them. Rhea said, we got some dirt on you too, as well Brian. Or should we call you Moon Knight and Red Draco. As she smirks at the duo who narrowed their eyes at her as she sits down on the couch. Rhea smirked, could you imagine what everyone in the student body would say to vigilantes as students? But if you join my peerage then I will not tell a single soul your secrets and you will get the benefit of being a devil, along with starting your peerage. Brian said, tell them, then dot as he and Issei made their way to the door, leaving the stunned devils behind. Fiba said, that didn't go well, President Dot making the rest of the club members nod their heads in approval. The two friends are walking down the hallway with scowls on their faces to the exit of the school and all pause waiting for their anger to cool down as they stand there. The two friends have a night of patrolling to do. Issei said, we are going on patrol right. As he looks at Brian, who nodded at him causing Issei to grin widely. A few hours later, it was night time the occult club members were currently confronting a stray devil named Visor, who is a young woman with a voluptuous figure with short white hair, but her lower body was gigantic and beastly with four legs, each having sharp claws, and a snake as a tail. Her overall appearance was reminiscent of that of a centaur. Rhea said, surrender Visor. As she points dramatically at the stray devil, causing the stray devil to laugh mockingly. Before the stray devil could say anything two figures landed in front of the devils, causing them to look at the two figures before them. The familiar figure is Moon Knight, but the second caught everyone's attention, as the figure was dressed in a suit that looked similar to the Arkham Knight, but red and black with the design of a dragon instead of a bat was standing next to Moon Knight. Visor hissed, Moon Knight and I see you brought a friend. As she looks at the new figure that's standing by the feared vigilante in interest, along with the occult club. Red Draco said in a mechanized voice, name Red Draco, and we are here to take you down. As he and Moon Knight get in their stances making the stray laugh, Iser said, I'm so scared. Moon Knight pulls a sword fro his cape which caught Kiba's attention as he grits his teeth at the sword in disgust. The sword looks like Saber from Fate Zur, but it was white and blue with a Moon Knight symbol on the guard. Kiba thought that sword.it can't be. As he looks at the sword in anger as he recalls the horrible memories of seeing a sword like that before in his childhood. Moon Knight and Red Draco went to go on the offensive while the peerage watches them with interest as they fight the rogue devil. Red Draco is using two guns to shoot bullets at Visor who trying to block, but she was slashed from behind by Moon Knight. 
Bizer screeches in pain, and she was shot in the left breast by Red Draco, making Rias along her female peerage members wince in pain. Red Draco shots her again in the stomach, causing Visor to scream again, along with fall on both of her knees holding her stomach. Moon Knight said, face our wrath dot as he charges at her and slashes her neck, causing her head to fall along forward, along with her body turning into ashes with her head. Moon Knight said, it has been done dot as he sheath his sword, and he was able to walk with Red Draco, but he to block Kiba's blade as it came near his face. Kiba demanded, where did you get that sword? As he locks blade with Moon Knight who just narrowed his lenses at him, but he begins to think back on how he found the sword. Flashbacks, Issei and Brian who is in their costume, are investigating a disturbance in a cave that was told by them from Drake, who sensed it when they were training in the forest. Moon Knight sees the sword stuck in the ground, making him curious. A figure approaches me. Causing both Red Draco and Moon Knight to look around for the source of the voice, but the sword glow green, causing the duo to look at the sword in confusion, but Red Draco was having a conversation to Drake, who is telling them that the sword is one of the swords of Excalibur. I am one of the swords of Excalibur, and I have chosen you to be my wielder. Moon Knight walks forward and he grabs the blade from the handle, causing him to be engulfed in green energy, making him closes his eyes. Moon Knight opens his eyes to see that he isn't in the cave anymore. Moon Knight sees that he is in a throne room of some kind, and he see a being made out of green energy floating towards him, making Moon Knight get in his fighting stance, but he drops his stance a bit as the being just floating at him in a non-threatening manner. The being said welcome Brian Johnson. Causing Moon Knight to narrow his eyes at the being before him. Moon Knight asked, how do you know my name as he draws a dagger from his cape to use if necessary. The being said, I am not your enemy Brian Johnson. Moon Knight put away his dart, and he gives the being his undivided attention as he looks at the being with suspicion, causing the being to come closer to him as Moon Knight sees that he is not a threat. The being said hello mighty warrior I am the spirit of Excalibur after my body was destroyed, many of used my pieces for their own greed, so I entered blessing, so that I can wait for a warrior worthy of wielding me. The church's views of naturals and barbaric experiments only use a small portion of my power, there is not natural only worthy, which is why I have chosen you to be my wielder collect my other half and complete me, so that you may become the strongest, so you can protect the other worlds from a dark force. Moon Knight said, tell me what you need me to do. Dot. Flash back over, Moon Knight said, walk away now dot as he pushes Kiba back with his sword and he glares at the Knight of the Peerage. Kiba just scowls at him and he sheaths his weapon away to walk back over to his king's side to look at the two vigilantes. Rias walks forward to them, causing the duo to tense up as they see Rias Gremory give them her usual smile. Rias said, good Brian and Issei are Red Draco. My offer stands you too. Making the two look at each other until they look back at her, Moon Knight Red Draco said, fuck no. Moon Knight throws a smoke bomb to the ground, causing the smoke to be let out which blinded the devils. The smoke cleared up, but the duo vanished, causing Rias to scowl in anger, as she wanted to add them to her peerage. Rias said, damn it, they got away. The Kendo asked, ara 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 they are bold, aren't they president as she giggles softly with a hand cover her mouth which made Rias even more frustrated. Rias thought I need a way to get those two on my side dot as she narrows her eyes, trying to think of a way of getting the duo in her peerage. Thiba thought I will destroy Excalibur, and I will have my revenge. Dottie grits his teeth, and he clenches his fist in anger. Chapter 4 Brian and Issei are walking from school, and they are eager to begin patrolling the city, but they are wary of crossing the devils again, since they've been pestering them about joining their peerage, but the duo could hardly care about the peerage or their problems. Brian said, man they are pushing at Issei. He looks over at his friend Issei, who also nodded in agreement. Issei said, yeah man, but I had to deal with my former friend's dot as he sighs in frustration along with pinching his nose. Flashback, Issei was heading to his class, but he was dragged by Mitsuda and Motohama to the boy restroom. Issei is pushed against the wall with his two former friends, giving him an accusing glare on their faces, making Issei raise an eyebrow at them. Issei asked, can I help you too? As he looks at them with his arms crossed as he is leaning against the wall of the restroom. Mitsuda said, yeah you can you traitor. As he glares at Issei in betrayal along with pointing an accusing finger at Issei. Motohama asked, why the hell are you hanging out with the pretty boy and not your true friends Issei as he crosses his arms over his chest as he too glares at Issei. The trio hears the restroom door opening and they see Brian cracking his knuckle loudly, which made Issei's ex-friends flinch as they see Brian glaring at them, which made Issei smile as he see his true friend come to the rescue. Brian said, time to whack a pervert dot as he cracks his knuckles for a final time as the two perverts begin to beg for mercy. Flashback over, Issei said, thanks for having my back, Brian dot as he looks over Brian with an honest smile on his face. Brian said, anytime Issei dot as he returns the smile at Issei. The duo is currently walking through the park and they see a girl with blonde hair that flows all the way down to her back, with split bangs over her forehead and a single strand sticking out from the top and sloping backward, dressed in beside a bench. 
Brian thought there she is Asia, and I will make sure you won't die. Dot as he solemnly swore as he looks at Asia. Brian asked, you need any help miss as he offers a hand to Isa who gladly takes it as she stands up, but the wind blew her white veil, revealing her bright green eyes. The Saiyan and Brian stare into those bright green orbs for different, but Brian's has a blush on his face, which didn't go unnoticed by Issei who gained a knowing smirk on his face, but he see Asia blushing as well as she looks into his sliver eyes in wonder. Asia said, thank you and you are so kind mister. Brian said, Johnson, Brian Johnson and happy to help Anandadas, he offers a handshake that Asia gladly accepts. Asia said, my Asia Argento, and it a pleasure to meet you Brian. Her stomach grumbled loudly, causing her blush and embarrassment. The duo chuckled at her which caused her blush again which only added to her embarrassment, but the duo stopped the chuckling and grinned at her. The winds blow again this causes the veil to get caught in the wind only for Brian to grab it just in time. Brian said, here you go ma'am dot as he hands the veils back to Asia. Asia said, thank you dot as she accepts the veil back from Brian. Asia said, I'm sorry I am kinda lost dot as she looks the duck with a sheepish expression on her face. Brian said, but first let get you something to munch on. The trio went to a nearby restaurant in a booth eating burgers Asia hunger is be satisfied, which made Brian and Issei happy as they watched their new friend munch on her burger with a look of satisfaction. Brian asked, hit the spot, didn't it Asia as he finishes his burger along with Issei. Issei asked, hey Asia would you go to the park making a side break eye contact with the duo, causing Brian to narrow his eyes at Issei. Asia said, the weather was perfect and I thought it would be nice to get and enjoy the day. As she smiles at the duo. Asia said, but then I saw you too my fun day got even better, so ya dot as she looks down her burger. Brian said, so since you're free let's all of us hang out together dot. Asia and Issei looked at Brian with a dumbfounded expression, but Asia blushed then it transforms into an excited smile. The trio went to the arcade to plays like Dance Dance Revolution, the racing game, Taken Group, and Brian won a stuffed animal that looks like Pikachu. Currently, the trio is walking out of the arcade with Asia holding her plushie to her chest little did Brian or Issei, she was glancing at Brian with a deep red blush that could rival a tomato as she holds the plushie close to her chest. Asia thought Brian and Issei are very polite, but every time I am around Brian my stomach flutters. As she holds her plushie tightly to her chest as well as looking at Brian. The trio is walking near the fountain and Asia takes a seat on the bench with the two males standing in front of her looking at the fountain admiring its beauty with the sun still shining brightly. Brian remembers today is when the fallen angel known as Rainer will return for Asia. Asia said, thank you, guys. As she looks at Brian and Issei in applications. Brian said, anytime Asia and besides we are all friends daughters, he gives her a smile which made her smile, but she looks down in sadness to Issei's confusion and Brian's understanding since he knows why she is sad. Issei asked, what wrong Asia? Asia said, it just that when I was younger no one wanted to be my friend dot as she looks down in sadness. Brian said, those people are idiots for not wanting to be your friend, and we will be your friend dot as he smiles at Issei. Issei said, yeah and you can count on us, Asia dot as he also smiles to Asia, as well as showing support to her. Before Asia could voice her gratefulness the trio all hear from Eiler Laffer coming behind them, causing them to see Uma looking at them with a mocking look, causing the trio to feel different emotions, as they see her on the fountain looking at them with that arrogant smirk on her face. The Uma said, oh isn't that cute little Asia made some friends as she leers at the trio mockingly. Asia said, Lady Rainer dot as she looks at the fallen angel in fear. Issei said, right fallen angel. Rainer said, so the rumors about your downward spiral into the wickedness of the devils were true and I have such high hope. Don't even try to run Asia. As she narrowed her eyes at Asia. Asia said, Began I want no part of the evil you and the other angels are up to. I ran away I'm sorry, but I couldn't stand being around them anymore. As she turns to the duo with an apologetic look. Issei said, don't apologize and we are glad you did. You're too good for them. You don't belong with them bunch of good for nothing one of bastards dot as he glares at his former date in anger as he remembers his almost near death experience by her hands. Issei demanded, what do you want from me Uma? As he and Brian stand in front of Asia protectively. Rainer said, oh don't worry my business has nothing to do with you little boy. Though I guess we can finish what we started couldn't we? As she smirks at Issei but when she sees Brian her smirk turns flirty. Rainer said, well aren't you a handsome one? And dare I say you look divine. As she looks at Brian with a flirty look on her face. Brian said, you re not my type dot as he pulls a crescent dart from his jacket and throws at Rainer who had a shock. The dart nicked the side of her face, creating a scar on the side of it, making Asia gasp in shock, along with covering her mouth. Issei, however, smirked in the pleasure of seeing his ex being nicked. Rainer said, my beautiful face. You will pay for Tha as he was interrupted by Issei who shot her in the head with his handgun when he was given the signal by Brian which was the dart. 
brain or body hits the fountain and turns to dust leaving the duo with a horrified nun who is looking at Issei in horror, but she faints in shock. Brian and Issei looked at each other sheepishly, but they grew serious as they need to get Asia to safety and away from the other fallen angels. Brian said, let get her out of here. As he picks up Asia and puts her in a bridal style. As they were leaving they didn't notice the Konkyo was watching them with a shocked expression because of two things a nun in devil's territory and Brian killed a fallen angel in devil territory, which spells trouble for the devils. Honkeko said, I must tell the president. Dot as she rushes back to the school to tell the president. Brian's apartment, Asia opens her eyes to see that she is in an apartment on a couch and she sees a familiar vigilante duo standing in front making her jump up in fright, but before she could let a scream Moon Knight covers her mouth along taking off his mask, revealing him to be Brian. Asia asked Brian. She looks over at Red Draco who is reaching for his helmet. Red Draco removes his mask revealing himself to be a say to Asia astonishment as she gasps loudly. The duo looks a bit guilty that they didn't tell their newly made friend about their double life, but before they say anything the door was being banged on which made the trio confused as Issei and Asia look at Brian for answers. Issei asked, were you expecting somebody Brian? Brian said, no, I wasn't. Brian walks to the door and he signals Issei to pull out a handgun ready if it was a fallen angel. Brian opens the door to see to his annoyance Rias and her peerage, but he see Rias looking at with angry expression, causing Brian to raise an eyebrow in confusion, but he was pushed to the side by Rhea, as she along with her peerage entered the house without an invite causing Issei, silently swore in anger. Issei said, great red riding bitch is here. As leans against the wall looking at all the members of the peerage in contempt. Rhea said, you went too far Johnson and you Issei I expected better of you. As she points the accusing at both of the vigilantes in disappointment. Issei asked, what the fuck you talking Gremory? As he leans against her with his arm crossed over his chest looking at her with a scowl on his face. Rhea said, you killing the fallen angel and you taking that nun into your house has jeopardized the whole devil community. As she looks at both of the vigilantes in anger and the nun in disgust. Asia flinches in fear causing Brian and Issei to scowl at her in anger at the way they insulted their new friend. They hear quiet sobbing coming behind, making both of them turn round to see Asia crying, causing Issei and especially Brian to scowl at Rias who has a smug look. Rias said, get the nun out of here and out of territory immediate. How? Rias was sent to the floor holding her face from the punch from Brian, who has the biggest scowl on his face, with causing her everyone to look taken back by the ferocious look on the normally mild-mannered male student that is second behind Kiba. Brian glares at Rias and her peerage causing them to shake in fear. Brian asked, who the fuck are you coming in my house demanding shit and you red-haired spoiled bitch, who are you tell us what to do? As he roars in anger causing Rias to flinch back along with everyone else. Brian was about to say more, but Akeno and Kiba got in front of him looking very angry that he insulted their leader, but Brian didn't care as he got some dirt on them, making him inwardly smirk. He sees in the corner of his eyes Issei readying his gun just in case. Kiba said, you gone far enough Johnson an apology to the president. As he summons his sword making Brian smirk. Brian said, I haven't yet Udo because you along with your proxy came into my house uninvited and insulted my friend who actually suffered more than you, along with Madam Hypocritite. As he points at Kiba and Akeno who scowls at him in anger. Kiba said, you don't know anything about us. As he narrowed his eyes at Brian. Brian said, let's see you were taken in by the church and was a part of the Holy Sword project, but those who were deemed failures were killed. You managed to escape, but you succumbed to the poison, but Red Riding Hood saved Dot as he looks at the shocked expression Kiba face making Brian smirk. Kiba asked, HH how? Brian said, I make it my business to know Dot he turns towards Akeno who gave him a brave face along. Brian said, you carry the name of the clan that ordered your mother and possible your death, but you scorn your father who has the responsibility of a high fallen angel, so basically you are spitting on your mother grave Dot as he points the now crying Akeno as Brian mentioned her mother. Brian said, the only person in your group that actually suffer was Konkyo Dodd, as he points at Konkyo who has a shocked expression on her face. Brian said, get out of my apartment and never return. As he points at the door looking at the peerage calmly but inwardly is angry. Rias get up from the ground and summons a circle that appeared in the middle of the apartment. All of the peerage members got on the circle, and Rias glares at Brian who gives it back to her, along with giving her the finger which made Rias scowl in anger. Rias said, this isn't over. As she vanishes leaving the duo alone for now. Brian let out a sigh and he turns to see Asia looking at him with tears in her eyes, causing Brian to sigh again. He walks over to her and he gets down on one knee to wipe the tears from Asia's eyes and he gives Asia a smile which was mirrored by her. Brian said, sorry Asia. Asia said, it okay and thank you for defending me daughters, she gives Brian a smile which he returns. Brian said, good but to the matter at hand we need to take down the fallen angels. Issei said, how are we going to do that? They outnumber us. Perhaps I can lend you some assistance. 
The trio looks around for the voice, but they see a blue portal opening up in front of their eyes, causing Brian and Issei to stand on guard. The portal opens fully, and they see three male figures that made Brian's eyes pop out in shock, as he recognized the three figure, as he knew them from his world when he was still fighting crime on it. The male figure on the left has a martial artist build, and he was wearing on a red and black suit with a face mask and helmet resembling the Christian devil, with the horns on the top of the head. He has the logo of 2DS, and he is holding a billy club, and he has a smirk on his face as he looks at Moon Knight. The man in the middle has a martial artist build was wearing a yellow mask with a pointed black and white almond eyes, the yellow sash dressed in an open green jumpsuit with a yellow slash around the waist with yellow boots, but what caught his say and Asia's attention was his dragon tattoo. The male on the right has short black hair and black eyes with a muscular build dressed in a full black suit with white boots. On his chest was a black bulletproof vest, and on it was a huge white skull that covers the front, and he has on a black trench coat. He was also armed with all kinds of firearms. Brian said, hey guys. As he waves at his friends. Chapter 5, Brian's apartment, Issei asked, so you along with the other three are from another earth where you may run around in costume to fight bad guys, am I correct? As he pinches his nose in irritation. The four otherworldly vigilantes nodded their heads which caused Asia to look in awe at them, but Issei looks at Brian in betrayal, making Brian look down in guilt because he wasn't honest with his best friend, but to tell him he came from another world, that saying take him to the asylum. Issei asked, you in the martial artist costume are living weapon called Iron Fist. As he looks at Iron Fist with a curious look. Iron Fist nodded, and he stands up to show his Iron Fist technique, making Issei and Asia look at the fist in awe, but before they could ask question Iron Fist stopped channeling his Kai into his fist, making the two residents of the supernatural world sigh in disappointment as they wanted to see the full ability of the Iron Fist. Issei asked, you dressed in the devil costume are blind as a bat, but your other senses have sharped, and you are a lawyer. As he looks at Daredevil who nodded his head in affirming what Issei said is true. Issei asked, and finally you are some kind of revenant who believes in killing will everyone known evil will make the world a better place. As he looks at Punisher who gives his cold, emotionless look but he nods his head. Punisher said, well I may be still alive, but James Empire died when his father died, and only the Punishers remain. As he crosses his arms and looks the other way as he saw the Brian smirk at him. Brian mocked, so gritty and dark are you sure you are not from the DC universe? As he made Daredevil and Iron Fist sniggered as they see Punisher scowl, but Issei along with Asia looked confused. Issei asked, DC Universe. As he looks at Brian for answers. Brian said, never mind but let remember the aim. As he tries to change the subject about the aim. This caused everyone to remember that the fallen angels are still at large and they will not stop until Asia is back in their custody. Punisher brainstorms a plan which caught Brian's attention as he sees Punisher in deep thought. Brian asked, Punisher what your plan? which caused everyone to look at Punisher with a curious look. Punisher said, I have a plan and you will not like it. Dot. Plubrum, Riaz was talking with Sona who is also a devil and came from a major class devil family called Citri, but right now they are in a heated discussion about a certain white cape vigilante's actions. Sona asked, he did what as she looked at her childhood friend with a horrified look as she hears what Moon Knight been doing under their radar. Riaz scowled, he even has a nun in his custody and he killed a fallen angel. As she rubs her face still feeling the stings from the punch that been given to her by Brian. Sona said, he is getting out of control Rias, and we need to get him under our control. As she messes with her glasses and thinks of plans of getting not only Moon Knight but Issei under control. Sona continued to brainstorm ideas in getting Moon Knight and Issei under their control, but she remembers something. Rias peerage outnumbers them, causing Sona to smirk which got the attention of Rias as she sees the smirk on Sona's face, making her want to know what the plan. Riaz asked, what's the plan Sona? Sona said, maybe you can revive them when they get themselves killed by the fallen angels. Riaz said, I'm listening. As she mirrors the smirk. Sona said, well if you beat them in the match then you can get them to become devils and you can have them get you out of their marriage. While the meeting was going on Moon Knight, Daredevil, Iron Fist and Punisher were making their way towards the fallen angels base to kill the group so Asia can be at ease for a bit. Moon Knight remembers the plan he had some very vocal comments. Flashback, what? Brian looked at Punisher who has an emotionless gaze on his face with an expression of both dumbfoundedness and anger after he heard the plan coming from the Punisher while the rest of the group look at the two cautiously just in case if the argument will heat. The Punisher said, my plan is that three of us go to the Fallen Angel's base to kill the goons and get answers out of them. Brian said, I heard what you said and it a bad plan Jason. As he crosses his arms over his chest. Punisher asked, why it is a bad plan Brian. As he looks curiously at Brian. Brian said, we will walk right into a trap and Fallen Angel isn't as dumb as they look. Making Asia nodded her head in agreement as she remembered being under their care. 
Brian said, and let not forget about the devils because they are persistent in getting me and Issei into the peerage. Causing Issei to nod in agreement making Daredevil narrowed his eyes at them. Daredevil said, let me deal with them then. As he held up his billy club. Brian said, tempting but no Jeff because she can bring her brother who is one of the Satan and have the whole devil race after us. As he sighs in frustration and plays with his hair. Issei said, which makes her untouchable, but Brian might have broken that streak dot as he also sighs. Brian said, yeah, but you know what let's keep the plan and Issei makes no devil harms Asia. He looks at Issei with a serious look. Issei nodded his head and Brian nodded back as he got up from his seat with old friends to take out the fallen angels, but before walk out the door with his friends, he hugged from behind by Asia, causing Brian to turn his head to look at her. Asia said, please be careful and watch out for Father Freedy can disturbed. As Asia shuddered as she recalled several times she crossed with the psychotic priest. Brian said, we will return Asia and beside heroes always win. As he gives Asia a wink and puts his mask. As Brian was about to leave, he gives Asia one last wave, then he heads out of the apartment leaving Issei and Asia alone in the apartment. Issei readies his handgun just in case of Rhea's or her peerage come by to force him to release Asia back in the fallen angel's custody. Asia whispered, please be safe Brian. Flash back over, the team sees the base of the fallen angel's base up head, but they stop as they see three exorcists guarding base, making the four heroes narrow their eyes at the guards. Punisher whips out an M16A1 and he aims it at the middle exorcist, locking it on the exorcist's forehead. Punisher said, target locked on. As he reaches for the trigger of the gun. Bang, the bullet went through the head of the middle exorcist's head, causing the exorcist to fall, which made the other two exorcists get on high alert, but before they could do anything, Punisher shot them one by one, causing them to join their comrade in death. Punisher said, entrance cleared. As he puts down his weapon and gives a nod to his allies. The team moved towards the base and as they got to the door, Moon Knight kicked the door which gained the attention of the people inside of the base, as they see the heroes standing in the middle of the doorway, all in their combat stance. Moon Knight along with his friends, checks to see what they are up against as they see several exorcists, but they see several figures that stood out, which made the group narrow their eyes as they checked them out. One was a young man with short white hair and red eyes dressed in clerical clothing looking at them with a disturbing smile that would have given a certain crown prince of crime a run for his money. Moon Knight knew who this was and he knew he plays an important role. Another figure was also a male, but he was a fallen angel with the appearance of a middle-aged looking man with short black hair and dark blue eyes, dressed in a pale grey trench coat over a white dress shirt with a matching ascot, black pants and shoes, a pair of black gloves, and a black fedora. The other two were both females fallen angels, but the team notices several differences between the two female angels. One was a tall and buxom woman with brown eyes and long, navy blue hair that obscured her right eye. She is dressed in a maroon trench coat-like top with a wide collar, a matching miniskirt, and black-heeled shoes. The trench coat top was open at her chest, giving a view to her breasts and cleavage. She also wore a gold necklace around her neck. She appears to wear a white shirt underneath her top, but they can only see it from the bottom. Her fellow female fallen angel was a girl with blonde hair styled into twin tails and blue eyes dressed in a gothic lolita attire, which comprised a black lolita dress with white frills, a large black bow on the front, and a green jewel embedded on the collar, white thigh-high socks, and black shoes. She also wore a large black bow on top of her hair. The white-haired priest asked, who the fuck you? As he points towards the team and he reaches for his gun. Moon Knight said, we will ask the questions here Selzen. As he reaches for some crescent darts. Freed said, ha 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 you aren't a devil, and I see neither your friends especially the one up in the devil suit. As he points to the calm but inwardly pissed off daredevil and he laughed loudly. Moon Knight said, you will leave Asia alone or else dot as he threatened Freed who is calming down from laughing but still hold his insane smile. Freed asked mockingly, or else what as he looked at Moon Knight with his insane grin. Moon Knight fires his darts at Freed and they all ended hitting him in his body, making him cry out in pain which started the fight between the team and the bad guys. Iron Fist was fighting a bunch of exorcists in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Daredevil is fighting Middleton who has a battle maniac grin on her face as she fights Daredevil who was flighting with his billy club. Punisher was shooting at Donaseek who was launching a light spear at Punisher, but Punisher rolled out of the way making the spear stuck in the ground. Moon Knight is fighting Kalawarner in sword fights, they are locking blades with one another, creating sparks as their blades clashed. Kalawarner goes for a strike, but Moon Knight dodges and nicks her left side causing Kalawarner to let a cry in pain as the slash burned her skin. Kalawarner said, you will pay for that dot as she charges at Moon Knight about to go for another slash. Moon Knight jumps over he jumps over her and he stabs her through the chest, causing her to gurgle up blood from the mouth, along with dropping her sword, which caught the attention of everyone in the church as they watched Kalawarner turn to dust. Middled said, you will pay for that mortal. 
as she summons a light spear, but Daredevil uses his billy club to stab her through the chest, causing metal turns to dust. Bonaseek said arrogantly, useless. And you may have killed two of my comrades, but I remain. As he throws several light spears at the heroes. The heroes dodged out of the way, but the exorcists weren't so lucky as they were impaled in their chest by the light spears, making them fall dead to the ground dead. Punisher shoots Donaseek in the wings, causing him to let out a scream in agony. Iron Fist channel Kai in his hand to making his hand glow yellow, and he delivers a punch to chest of Donaseek, causing him to crash into the wall, creating a large spider web crack. Moon Knight walks towards the downfallen angel who is looking up at him with a glare. Moon Knight said, tell me who ordered the hit on a say now dot as he points the sword at the fallen angel throat. Donaseek said, God. As he weakly laughs. Moon Knight stabs Donanseek in the left shoulder, causing Donanseek to scream out in pain as blood comes out of his left shoulder. Moon Knight narrowed his eyes at Donanseek, who is holding his left shoulder in pain trying to ease it. Donanseek said, I will never tell you anything. Moon Knight said, I guess we will ask Azariel or Kakabiel and get my answer. As he narrowed his eyes at the fallen angel. And Sanseek asked weakly, how 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 do you know them as he looks at Moon Knight in shock and fear. Moon Knight said, I make it my business to know everyone dot as he stabs Dan Sanseek in the chest ending his life. Before the heroes could say anything they hear several footsteps coming behind them, making them all turn to see Rias and her peerage looking at the destruction, along with the dead bodies of the base. Moon Knight said, sup princess dot as he gave Rias a lazy wave. Rias looks angry at his nonchalant attitude, but she sees that he is not alone as she and Peerage look new face, but they all look to Daredevil in disgust, as he is wearing a costume that mocking their race. Moon Knight sees this and smirks under his mask, but he frowns as he remembers something or someone missing causing him to curse. Moon Knight said, shit he got away. As he nods at Punisher who reaches into his coat to pull out a smoke bomb. Moon Knight said, well princess I wish we could all stay and chat, but we all got better stuff to do so peace out dot as he gives the signal to Punishers to drop a smoke bomb. As the bomb hits the ground the whole church is covered in smoke leaving Rias and her peerage coughing. The heroes use the distraction to leave the church and get back to the apartment. Brian's apartment. Asia is looking at the door with a worried look as she waits for Brian and his friends to come back. Issa see Asia's worried look causing him to sigh and to walk over to her getting her attention as she looks at him. Issa said, I know you are worried, but don't worry he and his friends are probably moping the floor with those fallen angels. As he tries to ease Asia's mood. Asia smiled, but they hear the sound of the door being opened causing Issa to pull out his handguns. As he turns around he sees to his relief it was a maskless Brian and his friends back from the mission, but he notices Brian has a scowl which made Asia along with Issa concerned. Asia said, you're back dot as she runs over to Brian and hugs him, causing him to blush under. This caused his friends to snigger at him, but they stop as they see his glare that was directed at them. Brian returns the hug, and he lets Asia as he remembers that Freed got away which didn't sit right with him, as Freed is a dangerous people to have unsupervised. Brian said, Asia Freed got away and we need to train. As he looks at her shocked look but it changes to a look of determination. Asia said, I will do it. As they were discussing the training the one above all who is in his glowing orb form was watching them from his domain. One above all has been checking Moon Knight's progress and so far he has been getting positive results that please him. The one above all said, they're doing a fine job and soon they will be with the Avengers, but now they have their own mission. As he pulls up another image of the Avengers fighting creatures in the Fate Zero world. Chapter 6, Kao Academy, Brian's old teammates along with Asia enrolled in Kao Academy, which made the duo especially Brian happy because he sees his old friends along with new friends every day, but the downside the devils have been more frequently in their harassment, but Sona has joined Rias. Brian and his friends are walking the hallways with their backpacks on their backs ready to leave school, Brian looks at his old friends who are wearing the same uniform as him, which made him smile. Brian looked at Daredevil and Jeff Mudrock, a young man with red hair wearing shades from the Daredevil Netflix series, dressed in standard uniform, holding his billy club in its cane form. Brian sees Iron Fister Marlon Rand, a young man with brown hair and blue eyes, wearing the same uniform as Jeff, Punisher and James Empire, but James ditched the blazer since he prefers trench coats. Brian looked over at Asia, and he sees that Asia is blushing from the attention that she is receiving from the male student body, but he sees the perverted looks of Issa's former friends, which caused Brian to glare at them, causing them to avert their eyes somewhere else. Asia went through some changes mentally and physically as she received training from the team in combat, intimidating tactics, Parker, weapons training, stealth training, along with defense training, and finally training to understand her sacred gear. Speaking of her sacred gear Asia was about to with the aid of her new friends to study more of its feats, and she discovers that not only is she able to heal others, but it gives herself healing to herself. Because of the intense training, she gained a slight toned physique, but retained her feminine figure. 
Asia wanted to be like her new friend and have a double life which made the group especially Brian nervous, but they let Asia join to her delight. Asia wanted a codename to symbolize her, and Brian gave her the name Mockingbird, since Brian could see Asia being Mockingbird from Marvel Comics. The group was also named the Defenders after a team of the same name from Marvel Comics. The Defenders were about to leave, but they stopped by Kiba who had a fake smile on his face, which made the group narrow their eyes. Kiba said, please follow me. Brian said, nah we think we will pass pretty boy. Brian's friends laughed at Kiba, who scowls briefly at them, but he regains control over himself as he regains his fake smile. The team saw Ria's who had the biggest smirk on her face, which made the teams feel uneasy as she continued to get closer to the group. Ria said, I, Ria's of House Gremory challenges you all to match dot as she points at the team. The team narrowed their eyes at the smirking Gremory and the team looked at each other for a moment. They turned back to Ria's who still has her smirk on her face as she waits for her answers from the teams, but she got confused as they smirked back. Brian said, hard pass. Ria's asked, what? Why? She looked taken back along with Kiba as they watched the team turn around and walk off. Brian said, not interested Red. As he and his team walked, leaving the two devils behind. Ria's and Kiba looked confused, but Ria's confusion turns into anger as she scowls at the retreating backs of the heroes. Ria's calms down as she remembers she has plan B and she will need Sona's aid to execute it. 30 minutes later the defenders were on the roof of a building, all wearing their costumes, and Asia, who was wearing a costume similar to Mockingbird's costume in 2016 with a mask as well. Defenders are looking for any clues on Father Freed since he is still at large and very dangerous. Moon Knight said, any sign of that psycho he looks down at city with his team. Daredevil said, negative dot as he looks around the city for any signs of the insane pastor. Mockingbird said, damn it he probably fucking skipped town. Iron Fist sensed something with his Kai, and he turned around to see a portal forming which caught the attention of the rest of the defenders as they turned around to see it was Rhea's along with her peerage. Moon Knight said angrily, I knew I smelt a bitch in the air, and here you are. As he crosses his arms over his chest. The rest of the defenders sniggered while Rhea's and her peerage bristled at that remark made by Moon Knight, especially Rhea's who is scowling at Moon Knight, but she regains her composer as she smirks at the defenders. Rhea said, I challenge you all to a fight. As she points her finger at the team. Moon Knight said, no dot. As the team was about to leave the roof they were stopped by another portal, and out came Sona along with her peerage all bearing smirks on their faces, making the defenders get into their fighting stances. Sona walked forward looking at the defenders with a smirk on her face. Sona said, listen to her offer. As she crosses her arms over her chest. Moon Knight asked, so you can get us killed like you almost did to say. The devils flinched as Moon Knight brought it up, but they glared at him for that statement, but Moon Knight along with his team, glared back at them, showing that they aren't afraid of the devils. Mockingbird walks getting attention as she steps toward Sona, who has a confused expression. Mockingbird said, I once believed that there was good in all the other factions, but are just as bad as the fallen angel's evil, but you hide your shit better. As she glares at the shocked Sona. Sona's peerage along Rhea's and her peerage were shocked that they were accused of being evil like the fallen angels, but their shocked expression morphed into an expression of outrage as they voiced their protest. Rhea's uses her power of destruction to blast the ground to get their attention. Rhea's said, I will offer you a deal if you beat me and Sona. Getting the Definitor's attention. Wunk Knight asked, what the deal Grimory dot as he crosses his arms looking at the smirking red-headed devil. Rhea said, the deal is that if you lose against my peerage and Sona peerage, then you must all become devils for me, along with joining my peerage daughters, she smirked at the angry faces of the defenders. Rhea said, but if you somehow win we will leave you alone. The defenders look thoughtful at the deal, and Moon Knight sighs as he looks at Rhea's, who still had her smirk on her face, making Moon Knight scowl beneath his mask and sigh one more time as he was about to give Rhea's his answer. Moon Knight said, I accept. Rhea said, good and we will fight in the school gym. As she opens a portal to the school gym, and everyone walked in the portal to the school gym. Defenders got into their combat stances as they saw the devils in their fighting stances ready to fight. The defenders pulled out their respective weapons as they looked to come out victorious in their fight against the persistent devils faction. Moon Knight said, let go. The battle began as both groups fought in an all-out brawl with Moon Knight fighting Rhea's, who is teaming up with Sona, who are both using their respective family magic to block Moon Knight's darts, making Moon Knight grit his teeth in annoyance. Iron Fist was fighting Konkyo who has the aid of Sona's Rook Tsubasa in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they are currently in a stalemate as none of them are able to land a single hit on each other, but Iron Fist decided not to use his Iron Fist tech wing yet because he wants to see how strong the two Rooks are. Daredevil is fighting Kiba who is being assisted by Tomo Maguri as they fight using their respective weapons in a stalemate match. Daredevil had to dodge from a slash from Kiba coming from the left, along with dodging one coming from Tomo. 
Mockingbird was fighting Akeno, who is being aided by her fellow queen Tsubaki, who is trying to wear down Mockingbird, who is using her staves. Mockingbird began to look for an opening, but she had to dodge a lightning strike coming from Akeno. Red Draco and Punishers were fighting Saji Gensherm and Raruko Nomura, two of Sona's pawn that will stop at nothing to make sure that their king comes out on top against the heroes. Red Draco along with Punisher are firing their guns at the two pawns who are dodging the bullets. Moon Knight uses his crescent darts and launch them at Rias, who is using her devil magic to create a shield to cover her and Sona from the darts, making Moon Knight narrow eyes looking for any holes in the shield. Moon Knight thought, I need to find a way to breach that shield, as he looks for weakness in the shield, but he had to roll out of the way from the incoming water missiles made by Sona, who used her family magic. Moon Knight sees an opening and pulls out a smoke bomb from his belt, which caused the two kings to look in caution at seeing the smoke bomb in hand, but they had little time to react as he threw it to the ground, causing the two devil kings to be blinded. Rhea said, damn it dot, as she is trying to find Moon Knight in the smoke with Sona. Sona said, keep your eyes open Rhea's. She called out to Rhea's and began to look around for Moon Knight. Moon Knight comes behind Sona and takes her causing Rhea's to look around for Sona while getting kicked in the face by Moon Knight. Rhea's was sent flying to the ground and was held at knife point at her throat by Moon Knight, who narrowed his eyes at her. Moon Knight said, submit. Rhea's asked where Sona as she is concerned for her friend. The smoke clears up showing revealing a tide and gags Sona, who is knocked out to the ground which causes Rhea's to gasp, but glare at Moon Knight, who rolled his eyes at her, which makes Rhea scowl and rage at him. Moon Knight said, don't get mad at me Rad she did to herself and give up now. As he presses the knife deeper to Rhea's neck deeper. Rhea said, you have gotten me and Sona, but our peerage will avenge us. She smirked smugly at Moon Knight, who narrowed his eyes at her. Iron Fist along with his two adversaries are currently sweating as the stalemate continues to drag on, but Iron Fist decided now was the time to use his Iron Fist Tequeen to end this confrontation as he smashes his fist to the ground, causing it to shake, which made his two opponents stumble until they fell to the ground. Iron Fist said, flawless victory. Daredevil sees he has an open as he sees his opponent's backs are turned, so he grabs the two knights by the back of their head and clashes the head together making both Kiba and Tomo fall to the ground unconscious. While the Punisher was shooting at Rurko Red Draco was fighting Saji, along with exchanging words or insult to be specific, as they are exchanging blows as they utter an insult to one another. Saji said, well one of you're going to be an even more pathetic devil than you are a vigilante dot as he uses his sacred gear of Ritra in its absorption line form. Red Draco said, wow I hope your fighting ability is better than your shit talking dot as he shoots bullets at Saji. Saji shoots a line at Red Draco, but Red Draco rolls out of the way to fire some bullets at Saji which pierce Saji's chest, causing him to wince in pain. Red Draco jumped forward to deliver a skull crushing jumping knee to the face of Saji who fell on his back knocked out. Red Draco said, MGM Buffett to face. As he looks down at the unconscious Saji, he turns to see that Mockingbird, along with Punisher, have beaten their respective opponents. Punisher said, they are weaklings. Mockingbird asked, how are they supposed to protect this place? Rias couldn't believe this that her peerage was lost, and Moon Knight smirked underneath his mask as he saw the results of the match. He looks at Rias, who is still on the floor, held at knife point by Moon Knight, who is smirking underneath his mask. Rias asked, how how did we lose as she looks up at Moon Knight? Moon Knight said, it's simple you rely on your peerage strong points like a crutch, rather than helping them overcome their weakness like a good leader. He sneers down at Rias, who flinches at his glare. Rias said, but I gave them a chance at a new life. She argued with Moon Knight, who gave a mocked laugh. Moon Knight said, that what I am talking about you made them weak and so used to relying on their normal skills at Grimmery. This is why you will lose against Riser. As he crosses his arms over his chest looking at Rias. Moon Knight said, let go, guys. He called out to the rest of the team and began walking out of the gym, leaving the devils alone to wallow in defeat. As the defenders finally leave out Rhea shakily gets up from the floor and she looks around the gym seeing her defeated friends on the ground knocked out. She let out a stream of tears as she realized that Moon Knight made a good point about her and her peerage. Rhea's thought by Satan he is right. Rhea's thought about more of what Moon Knight's words and she realized that she seems to rely on her members' strong point rather than improve their flaws. She also thought about her members' problems that held them back from improving which made her mentally slap herself in disgust. Rhea's thought, I've been worried about my future instead of my member's past. She looks down in guilt and remembers having plenty of time to help them move on, but she's been occupied with trying to get out of the marriage with Riser. Rhea's falls on both of her knees and she looks at her peerage in sadness as she lets the feeling of failure take over. She covered her face to hide her face in shame as tears began to fall down her face again. Rhea's thought, by my honor as a devil I will help my peerage move on and I will get my freedom from Riser. She removes her hands from her face, revealing her determined face as she begins planning a training session for her peerage. 
Meanwhile, the defenders are back on the roof looking for Father Frieder inspecting for any criminal activity, but they couldn't find any side of Fried making them slightly frustrated, but they heard the police siren which brightens their mood. Moon Knight said, time to bust some criminal skulls. Iron Fist asked, why are you so violent? Moon Knight said, to get the criminals to stop doing the same dumb shit again. He and his team jumped down ready to fight crime. Moon Knight said, defenders unite. He shouted battle cries as they ascend onto the ground ready to fight crime. Chapter 7, Where Am I? Moon Knight opens his eyes to see he is in his costume, and he see he is in a destroyed city of Cow, making him horrified, but he sees something before that made him gasp in horror, as he see his teammates on the ground laying in a pool of their own blood. Moon Knight see a huge shadow over him, and he turns around to see a huge shadowy with red eyes that burn like the flames from hell. Moon Knight see the shadowy figure summons a blue cube, but before Moon Knight could say anything he see his friends along with the world turning into dust. Moon Knight yelled, Nuo. As he tries to stop the shadowy figure by throwing a crescent dart, but the figure disappears causing the dart to fall onto the ground. Moon Knight falls to his knees, and he see he start to turn into dust as well causing him to scream in rage. Brian's eyes snapped open as he felt someone shaking him to wake up, and he sees it is Asia who dressed in pajama along with his friends looking at him with a worried look on their faces, as they probably hear him from her room, making Brian gain a guilty expression on his face. Brian said, sorry guys dot as he gives his friends an apologetic look on his face. Asia asked, what happened Brian as she looks at Brian with a concerned look on her face. Brian lied, it nothing Asia and everything alright dot as he tries to convince his friends nothing wrong. Before Asia or the guys could say anything, Rias appears in a flash barely wearing anything, and she jumps on Brian, causing Brian to look taken back by Rias action. Brian sees Rias desperate look causing him to realize that Riser is coming. Rhea said, take my virginity, Brian dot as she tries to get Brian to take her virginity. Before Rhea's could go any further she was stopped by a beautiful young woman, appearing to be in her early twenties with back-length silver hair that features a long braid on each side with small blue bows at the ends, while the rest is let down which ends in twin braids and silver eyes. She has dressed in G a blue and white French maid outfit with long sleeves and a white maid headband over her head with red lipstick as a cosmetic accessory. The guys along with Asia are looking at the woman with an alarmed expression on their faces. The woman said, this is where you ran off to. Time to come home Rhea's dot as she drags Rhea's off of Brian who looked relived along with Asia who had a slightly jealous look. The woman turns towards Brian along with his friends who are looking are looking confused, but the woman bowed. The woman apologized, I apologized for and we will be out of your hair dot as she and Rhea's vanished leaving the room the team alone. The team all looked at each other with WTF expression on their faces after Rhea's tried to force Brian to have sex with her, but she was stopped by that mysterious woman who showed up out of the blue. A couple of hours later the defenders are currently in school heading to the occult room because they were being called down there by Rhea's, which made the team excluding Brian both annoyed and curious as they want to know why Rhea's summoned them to the club room. Brian said, time to see what Grimory wants. As he opened the door of the club room and he sees Rhea's with her peerage, along with some new faces. One was is a busty woman with long, wavy purple hair that falls all the way down her back and matching eyes. At the front, the right side of her hair falls over her breast and covers her right eye, while the left side falls near the top of her skirt. She is wearing a dress consisting of a navy blue tunic top with gold accents and a pale blue skirt with open sides, black shoes, and overmatching thigh-high stockings with garter belts. The top reveals much of her cleavage and is held with a gold choker with blue and red jewels. Over this, she wears a white overcoat with black and gold accents and matching pauldrons. Her accessories, she wears a black headband with a red orange jewel over her forehead to keep her long hair in place. The next person was a young girl who is wearing a kimono with a color pattern of purple, orange, and pink, with her hair tied on the opposite side. The next figure is a young woman with light brown hair and green eyes. Her outfit consists of a full set of silver armor with black accents that appears to be a cross between a European knight, chest plate, gauntlets, and greaves, and a Japanese samurai, hip plates and shoulder guards, and wears a headband that goes across her hair and forehead. She is equipped with a broadsword and a dagger, both of which are held with brown belts slung across her hip. The broadsword is slung on her left hip and features a red jewel on the pommel and has bandages across the handle for grip. The dagger, which is located behind her hip, features a gold hilt with bandages on the handle. The next female is a tall young woman with long black hair with a dark blue tint and brown eyes. Her hair features five thin ponytails going around her head, which are held up by a golden hair accessory on top of her head. Her outfit consists of a white top with black accents that is modeled after a Chinese xiongsum, red shorts, and armored knee-high boots with matching gauntlets. The top features a diamond shape on the chest area, giving a view of her breasts and cleavage. The next female is a woman with short light brown hair and gray eyes. Her hair has three red highlights across and wears a plain white mask that covers the right side of her face. 
Her outfit consists of a black jacket and matching jeans. The jacket has wide shoulders and a wide collar and features three leather straps on both her arms. It is also slightly open, revealing her rather large breasts and cleavage, and it is cut off at her midriff. Her jeans have a section on her right pant leg, cut off, revealing some of her thighs and rear end, and also features three leather straps on her calves, just below the ankles, and two extra straps on her right pant leg to keep it in place. She also wears black fighting gloves and boots. The next female is a well-endowed young woman of Chinese descent with shoulder-length black hair and blue-green eyes. Her hair has two Chinese-style buns on both sides of her head, while the front features bangs that form a slight V-shape across her forehead. She is wearing a navy blue kipau with gold accents, a white sash around her stomach, and black low-heeled shoes. The kipau is open at the chest area, giving view to Shulin's breasts and cleavage. She also wears black arm guards over her forearms. The two females are two very young girls with turquoise hair, which they keep tied to one side of their head with a yellow ribbon, opposite to their sister, and blue eyes. Both of their outfits consist of gym uniforms, which consist of white t-shirts with blue accents, black leggings, and blue sneakers over knee-high socks, similar to the Kuo Academy's girls' gym uniforms, albeit without the logo. They also wear an orange wristband on their left wrist. Both of their chainsaws are colored blue. The other two females are two young girls, appearing to be in their teens. Being twins they sport similar appearances, with a major difference being Nai's red eyes and blue hair, in contrast to Lee's blue eyes and red hair. Also, Nai ties her hair in a ponytail, while Lee has hers in a braid with a pink bow tied at the end. Due to them being Nekamadas before being reincarnated as devils, both of them retained their trademark light brown cat ears with black stripes. They also wear piercings on their ears, with Lee having two gold earrings on her left ear and Nai having blue-colored ones on her right. Similarly, both of them have a fang sticking out of their mouths, with Nai having hers to her left, Lee having hers on her right, thus mirroring each other. The next female is a young girl with shoulder-length light brown hair and dark brown eyes, dressed in a buttoned, sleeveless French-made uniform with a white lace design, along with a standard-made headpiece, cuffs, and a white half-apron to go with the set. She also wears light gray tights. The next is a young girl with shoulder-length brown hair, dressed in a sleeveless French-made uniform that exposes her cleavage, with a white lace design on the edges, as well as a made headpiece, half-apron, and forearm-length fingerless gloves. The next female is a young woman with long pale blue hair and amber eyes. She has tanned skin and is seen wearing a bikini made up of a metallic underwire brassiere and a silk loincloth that exposes her sides. She also wears a silver-colored tiara and neck rings with a ruby and blue gem respectively. Other accessories that she wears include ruby orb earrings, neck rings with a blue gem, a snake-themed bracelet on her upper arm, and a transparent pink veil across both her arms. She has notably has purple highlights around her eyes. The female is a young girl with blue hair and light brown eyes. Her hair is styled with four short ponytails, with two of the four pointed up and the remaining two pointed down. The front of her hair features split bangs going across her forehead, with side bangs framing her face. She is wearing a white haori with a red obi, which is worn under a red happy coat. She wears bandages on her forearms and shins and wears black guards over her hands. For footwear, she wears a pair of smrai. The final female is a beautiful young girl with dark blue eyes. She has long blonde hair tied into twin tails with large drill-like curls and blue ribbons keeping them in place. The front of her hair has several bangs hanging over her forehead, with a V-shaped fringe hanging over the bridge of her nose. She is a light purple dress with dark purple accents and a blue bow at the front. At the back, three feather-like extensions mimicking a bird's tail protruding from the dress, which, when combined with her wings of fire, give her a bird-like appearance. The last member is what caught the team's attention as they see as a tall and handsome young man in his early twenties, with short blonde hair and dark blue eyes, dressed in a burgundy blazer with gold embroidery on the right, with matching pants and black dress shoes. Underneath his open blazer is a white dress shirt that is not fully buttoned, just one button short, giving a slight view to his chest. Rhea said, you hear good dot as she smiles at Brian, but she see Brian glare causing her to pale. Brian said, cut the bullshit Gremory we had a fucking deal dot as he scowls at Rhea's, causing her peerage to come to her defense, while the other peerage at Brian in confusion. The male last arrogantly, who are you to get angry with Riser's finance human dot as he sneers at Brian, causing Brian to glare at Riser, making him flinch. Brian said angrily, shut the fuck pretty boy before I rip your dick and beat to death with a dot as he glares at Riser, who covers his crotch in fear, while his peerage along with Rhea's and her peerage look shocked at what Brian stated while his teammates were sniggering. Riser said, why why you can't talk to Riser like that human dot as he looked horrified at the possibility of having his manhood being ripped off by a human. Brian said, you got a problem with it then calls 1 to 800 I could give a rad ass, then dot as he made his teammates, along with Rhea's peerage laugh, while Riser and his peerage excluding the blonde hair girl who is giggling a bit. 
Bria said, thank you, Brian, for making us laugh, but I brought you here for two reasons. As she comes from laughing loudly. Bria's felt all eyes on her as she takes a deep breath as she looks at the team in an apologetic way which got everyone's attention. Rias have been reflecting on the way she handles things with her peerage, along with protecting her territory with Sona. Rhea said, first I would like to apologize to you and your team for trying to get you all to become devils, but is say I would like to say I am sorry for trying to get you killed so I can use you for my own agenda. As she gives the team a guilty look which shocked the team, but Riser had a scowl on his face. Riser said, my dearest Rias you don't have to give these lowly human anything bedside if one dies, then so what dot as he shrugged his shoulder with an arrogant smirk on, along with putting an arm over Rias s shoulder. Some of Riser s peerage members to nod their heads in agreement at their king's statement making Rias, along with her peerage, and the team glare at the arrogant devil who was hanging off of Rias like a leech. Brian said, for a guy who was scared of having his dick you talk a lot of shit for a guy whose mom still dresses him dot as he smirks at Riser's splutter look while his team and Rias along with her peerage sniggered at Riser's look causing a few of Riser's peerage to round upon Brian. The Chinese devil said, how dare you insult Riser like that dot as she glares at Brian in hatred. The bomb queen said, you should begging on your knees for forgiveness, worm dot as she too glares at Brian. Brian said, I don't get on my knees for no one, especially a guy who likes he went solo from the boy band dot as he smirked again at the angered look of Riser, who is getting red in the face, making his team along with Riss and her peerage laugh at him. Riser said, you have made fun of Riser for the last time human and I, Riser Phoenix challenge you to rating game in two weeks dot as he gets everyone's attention as some of them look at Riser in shock, but Brian had a scowl on his face. Brian said, not interested asshole and besides we have better than to worry than some want a bad boy he thinks he is Dwayne the Rock Johnson dot as he turns to leave out the door with his team following behind him. As the team was walking out the riser had the biggest scowl on his face but he see Asia making him gain a perverted looking grin on his face as he thought of a way to get Brian to agree to fight him. Riser mocked, so you are a coward boy. I see your lady friend is with you and it's shame that she is hanging around a coward like you dot as he smirks at Brian, making some of his peerage snickers at Brian. Brian said, Asia is too good for you, and I rather be a coward than a pedophile like you bird brain dot as he points at the youngest Riser's peerage member, making Riser look shocked, while Rhea's s peerage and the rest of the defenders look at Riser in disgust. Riser said, be pedophile. How dare you call Riser Phoenix a pedophile you worm, and she accepted becoming one of my members dot as he gives Brian a smug grin, but it falters as he see Brian smirk. Brian said, not helping your case mister. My mind telling no, but my body telling yes. Dot as he mocks Riser, who gets anger at C. Brian's team laughing at him again. Brian begins to leave again with his team. Riser said, If you walk away, then you disgrace your family. Dot as he said that he felt the wind get cold, and he felt his hair stand on the back of his neck as he see Brian giving him a death stare. The rest of the defenders are shaking their heads at the stupidity of Riser as he took a personal subject, and before anyone could blink, Brian punched Riser in the face, which sent Riser flying into the wall, creating a dent in it. Brian said, never bring up my family. I accept your challenge and see you in two weeks. Dot as he walked out with his team leaving the devils alone. Rhea said, you idiot. Dot as she looks at Riser with an angry look who looks at her in confusion. Riser asked, what did Riser do my sweet Rhea's as he tilted his head in confusion. Rhea said, you have angered the wraith of the Moon Knight. Dot as she said the name Riser, along with his peerage paled when they heard the name Moon Knight. Riser and excluding the blonde girl grew very afraid if that human was the Moon Knight that they've been getting reports on, and if the rumor is true, then Moon Knight has a team of other human vigilantes that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any faction member. Riser heard about how Moon Knight defeated a fallen angel without a holy weapon. Riser thought shit dot as he pales even further at fighting Moon Knight. After two weeks of training, the defenders are currently dominating the Riser's peerage to Riser's horror, as all of his peerage members were knocked out, but Ravel submitted before she could actually get involved. Riser see he is surrounded by defenders, but he notices Moon Knight is missing causing a smirk to spread on his face. Riser asked, where the cowardly Mon Knight as he tries to get a reaction from the team, but he let out a yelp in pain, as he felt something causing him to see sticking out of his arm was a crescent dart. The white figure lands in front of causing Riser's eyes to widen in horror, as standing there was Moon Knight cracking his knuckles, making them pop, which put the fear in Riser. Riser wished he could be somewhere else rather be right here losing in front of his finance and her peerage. Moon Knight goes for a hard-hitting punch to head of Riser, causing Riser's head to snap to sight, along with spitting out blood from his mouth. Riser was grabbed by his neck and was punched again by Moon Knight, making Riser fall to the floor holding his face. Riser cried, I give Dot as he waves it of signaling that he give up causing Grafia to step in to stop the match. Punisher said, Pussy Dot as he spits on the ground in disgust at the horrible displayed by Riser. Daredevil said, Wussy Dot as he down at Riser who is clutching his face. 
Iron Fist said, he is a joke to fighters. As he shakes his head in disgust at Riser. Mockingbird said, all talk and no actions. As she she smirks at Riser, who is still on the ground. Red Draco said, that was a total yawn fist. As he lets out a mock yawn. As they were about to leave they were approached by Lady Phoenix Ravel Phoenix and Scissor to Lucifer, causing the group to look at each other in confusion, but they stood on guard as the three devils approached them. Scissor stepped forward and gives them a friendly smile. Scissor said, the defenders we have so much to talk about. As he looks at the group that been the source of interest to the supernatural factions. Chapter 8, the defenders are currently in a victory party which was held in the underworld, with the devil resident watching their every move to the team's annoyance. The team is pissed off at Rhea's for getting them involved in her affairs, but they are even more pissed off at her brother even more. Flashback, why I'd? Brian couldn't believe what this devil before him is has asked him and along with his teammates, but Brian notices that he isn't the only one shocked as he see the look of surprise on his teammates' faces as they looked at one of the devil's leader. Surzich said, I am asking if you all would like to join the devil faction. As he gives the defenders a friendly smile. Brian said, hard pass and we are fine working on our own daughters, he gives Surzich an uninterested look on his face. Surzich asked, but wwy as he looked flabbergasted to why his offer was rejected. Red Draco said, because of you devils are arrogant, selfish, and remorseless with humans. As he crosses his arms over his chest and gives him a glare that Surzich flinch. Surzich said, that's not true Isay. As he tries to reason with Isay, but he was shot in the shoulder by Isay, making him cry out in pain along which gains the attention of his wife and child, while the two Phoenix members looked at Red Draco. Milikas cried, daddy. As he looked at his father in horror along with his mother. The other devil leaders came running over there to check on their fellow devil to see if he is alright, but they see the bullet is very deep in the shoulder of Surzich, making the devil panic as they fear for their leader life, and Graefa turns to Red Draco with tears in her eyes. Rayifa yelled, how could you shoot my husband in front of our son? As she looked at Red Draco in anger and confusion. Red Draco said coldly, your husband allowed his sister to let me so I can be a pawn, so she can get out of her marriage with fried chicken bastard. As he glares at Lady Phoenix and Grafia. Lady Phoenix yelled, how dare you insult my son as she walked towards Red Draco, but she blocked from getting close to him as the rest of the defenders making her take a couple of steps back. Moon Knight said, back. The fuck up, devil dot as he held his blade towards Lady Phoenix's neck. Bear devil said, you mess with one of us you mess with the whole group dot as he narrowed his eyes at Lady Phoenix. Iron Fist, Punisher and Mockingbird got closer to Lady Phoenix, who gained a fearful expression on her face, causing Sir Zerch to raise a hand up to get everyone's attention, before things can escalate to something very serious. Sir Zich said weakly, wait. I'm sure we can work things out dot as he tries to stand up, but he was being held up by Grey along with the other devils. Moon Knight said, I have an interest in associating with your kind after your sister tries to get us killed. As he narrowed his eyes Surzurge who looked down in shame for allowing his sister to get some people killed for her own selfish mission. Surzurge said, I know and I am not proud of what my sister did and I am no better, but please don't let Rhea's action dictate my race. As he gives the team a pleading look, but he flinched as he see the team giving him a glare. Mockingbird said, we have seen how you run things in your territory, and you all make terrible protectors. As she gives Surzich a steely glare which made him shiver a bit. Punisher said, you devil think we will bend a knee to your will. As he points his guns at several of the devils, causing them to get nervous. Iron Fist said, all you supernatural look down at humans, but when we start fighting back you are all scared shitless. As he lights his fist up, causing Ravel to look at him in interest. Surzich said, it seems I can't convince and I get it, but please stay for the victory party. As he gives the team a pleading look, hoping that they will at least stay for the party. Flashback over, Moon Knight said, fucking devil. As he looks at the party seeing the devils all looking at them in curiosity, making Moon Knight scowl a bit. Moon Knight sees his teammates being swarmed by a bunch of devils who are trying to get their attention, but the team wasn't having it, as they are trying to avoid answering questions by them, making Moon Knight chuckle nutty felt someone tap his shoulder, causing him to turn to see it was Ravel Phoenix. Moon Knight asked, may I help you miss? Phoenix as he gives her a curious look. Ravel asked, can I talk to you and your teammates in private? As she gives Moon Knight a pleading look. Moon Knight sighed then he signaled his team to get their attention, causing them to walk over to where Moon Knight with a curious look, but they glared at Ravel who shrank under their gaze. Moon Knight gestured for them to follow him to another room. As they enter the room everyone see it is the meeting room for the Devil Lords, and Ravel looked nervous, seeing all eyes are on her, but Ravel breath in, then out as she stared at the team with newfound bravery in her eyes. Ravel said, my name is Ravel Phoenix of House Phoenix, and on behalf of my family, I would like to apologize to you all for what my brother did to warrant your fury. As she bows towards the astonished defenders. Moon Knight asked, why are you apologizing for your brother's actions as he gives the girl a confused look. Ravel stated, my brother made us look like arrogant beings. 
As she looks down in shame as she recalled her brothers and her fellow devil's disgraceful action toward the team. Iron Fist said, we are honored that you are willing to apologize for your kind and family actions, but you shouldn't have apologized for their behalf. As he looks at Ravel who is blushing in embarrassment. Punisher said, it not your fault that your fellow devils are pricks and can't protect their territory. As he crosses his chest as he stares at Ravel. Mockingbird said, you were the first person to forfeit the match. As she gives Ravel a confused look. Red Draco asked why did you forfeit. As he looked at Ravel with a curious look. Ravel said, I regret doing the thing on my brother's peerage, so could you let me be with you guys for a new chance. As she gives the defenders a pleading look which threw them for a loop. Moon Knight asked, why do you want to join our group miss? Phoenix as he looked curious as to why a devil from a major devil family wants to join his team. Ravel said, I looked up heroes and I never looked down at humans. As she looked at the team giving them her truthful statement. Red Draco asked, any other reason why you want to join our team. As he is interested in why the devil wants to join their group. Ravel said, I am sick of our territory being invaded by the other factions, and I want to do something about it. As recalled from hearing about a group of fallen angel in the devil's territory under their noses. The team looked at each other mentally trying to decide whether or not to allow a devil on their team, but they all looked at Ravel who is waiting patiently for an answer from the group, making them the group finally made their decision. Moon Knight said, we decided to allow you to join our team, Ravel. As he gives his final decision, hoping it won't bite him in the ass. Ravel said, thank you and you all will not regret this. As she offers the team a smile. After three weeks of training, Ravel was ready to join the defenders on the patrols, along with searching for Father Freed, who is still at large and dangerous. Ravel was trained in combat along with learning more about her family magic to scratch the surfaces. She learned she summoned fireballs that can track enemies, teleport, matter transmutation, energy absorption, and she learned she can fly without the aid of her wings to her amazement. She decided her codename would be Phoenix, since her clan's sacred animal is a phoenix. Currently, the team was hunting down a group of criminal, and they finally found the criminal to their hideout which is a warehouse. The team is on the roof of a building watching criminals watching the front of the warehouse that has four criminals wearing bulletproof armor holding rifles. The team looked at their new member Raveler Phoenix, who is wearing an outfit that looked similar to Jean Grey's Red Phoenix costume from the comic, looking very eager to bust some criminals. Moon Knight said, we need to take down the guards. As he begins to plan ways to take down the guards. Punishers walk to the edge of the roof, then he takes out a Barrett M107 from over his shoulder to point it at one of the guards, then he looks through the scope getting an aim at the unprotected head of the criminal, finally he took shoot, causing the guard to be blown back, which caught the other guard's attention. Punisher said, time to clean house. As he pulled the trigger again and killed all the other guards. Punisher looked back at his team giving them a thumbs up, signaling them that the guards causing Moon Knight to nod his head. Moon Knight walked over to the edge of the roof to see what to do next, and he sees that they need a way inside of the warehouse with being detected. Moon Knight said, defenders move out as he looked over at his team. Inside the warehouse, several criminals were standing guard, while the other criminals started loading up the truck with drugs, but the window at the top was shattered as the defenders dropped down to the ground, causing the criminals to get alarmed as they see the team. One criminal said, shit at them. As he called over to his comrades. The criminals pulled out their guns and they all began firing at the defenders, but the phoenix uses her magic to form a shield around the whole team. The criminals run out out of bullet making phoenix drop her shield and the defenders all went on the offensive as they went to attack the criminals. Punisher was fighting two criminals and Punisher saw one of the criminals throws a punch at Punisher, but Punisher parried the punch and he blocks the second criminal's punch as well, then he shoots both of the criminals along with some others as well. Iron Fist was fighting several of the criminals, and he was winning with ease as he used his Iron Fist technique to send all of the criminals flying into the walls of the warehouse. Iron Fist breaths out stopping his fist from blowing. Some of the criminals from the truck stopped loading and joined the fight as they all came out carrying weapons running towards the defenders. One of the criminals swung a club at Red Draco, but Red Draco countered it by stopping the strike with his forearms, then Red Draco hits the criminal with a hammer fist holding one of the guns, which gave some space for Red Draco to kick the criminal in the chest. Red Draco puts his guns back in their holster. Mockingbird is fighting a criminal using her staves as she goes for a thrust to the abdomen of the criminal, along with a forehand thrust to elbow leading up to the head, followed by a backhand along with another forehand, with the addition of torque, as she pivoted with a backhand. Daredevil blocked a left hook coming from a criminal with his forearm, and Daredevil pulls the criminal's opposite arm, only to get hit with a whipping hammer fist to the face. Daredevil hit the criminal with a downward strike to the face, and the criminal goes down, only eat an inner forearm strike to the face from Daredevil, which brought the criminal head up for Daredevil to hit the criminal's knee with a thrust kick, causing the criminal to buckle, and Daredevil follows up with a rising knee strike to the head of the criminal. 
Moon Knight grabs the criminal's left wrist along stretches out the arm and gets an undertook to the other side around the back then Moon Knight lifts his hip up to flip him over. Moon Knight does an arm wrench which made the criminal cry out in pain. Phoenix is currently bobbing and weaving the strikes coming from the criminal, then she uses her fire magic to burn them to a crisp. She sees a couple of criminals are running away from the scene and getting into their trucks, causing her to send several fireballs to hit them making them explode, but she misses one casing her to curse silently. Anik said, hey guys a truck got way. As she looks over her shoulder to see that the team beat their opponents. Moon Knight said, after that truck. As he chases after the truck with his team. Meanwhile, the truck was on the road trying to possibly shake the defenders off, but the truck wobbles out of control, causing it to crash into a post. The criminals all piled out to see what caused the truck to crash into the post, and they all see there was a hole in one of the tires. One of the criminals asked, where the fuck did the hole come from as he looks over his comrades for answers. Before any of the criminals could respond they hear footsteps causing them to turn around to see the silhouette of a woman leaning against the wall of a building, making them look confused at her appearance. The woman said, hello boys. as she greets the criminals with a friendly wave. A couple of minutes later the defenders show up to see that the criminal was all dead on the ground and they all wonder who beat them to the punch, but they all hear feminine laughing coming from the top of the truck and they see jump down before them was a female. The female was a red-haired woman with green eyes dressed in a uniform became black with grey webbing and a red herglis over her stomach. It also features a widow's bite, a utility belt, and two thigh holsters. She is looking at the group with a smirk on her face. The female said, hello defenders. as she crosses her arms over her chest. Moon Knight asked, who are you as he looked at the woman with narrowed eyes. The woman said, my name is Natalie Wilson and I am the Black Widow. as she gives the team a smirk. Chapter 9. Brian asked, so let me get this straight you came from a world where there is Sorcerer Supreme called Archmage and Blade running around. As he looked at Black Widow who was sitting on the couch looking at the team with a smirk. Black Widow said, yes and they are interesting to work with. Dot as she begins reminiscing about her time working with the two warriors. Ravel asked, wait a minute. You guys including Brian are from another world. As she looked at Brian and his oldest friends. She saw they nodded their head answering her question causing Ravel's jaw to drop. Ravel said, incredible. But what a blade and archmage is she at Black Widow with a questionable look on her face. Black Widow said, call my not Ale or Nad and Blade is a damper, and Archmage is like my world Doctor Strange who is the Sorcerer Supreme. Ravel said a damper interesting, but tell me about this Sorcerer Supreme dot as she wanted to know more about the title. Natalie said, a Sorcerer Supreme or Sorcerer Supreme is a title granted to the practitioner of the Mystic or Magic Arts, who has greater skills than all others, or commands a greater portion of the ambient magical energies than any other organism on a given world or dimension. As she smirks at Ravel who looked awe at the title. Ravel said, all that power for one human. As she thought about her fellow being jealous at the thought of a human holding that type of power. Brian asked, what are your intentions in this world? Natalie as he crosses his arms over his chest as he looked at Black Widow. Black Widow said, I want to join your team. As she smirks at the team who narrowed her eyes. A couple of days later, the team, along with their new member Natalie Wilson, who is dressed in a school uniform, are walking with the team in the hallway, dressed in their school uniform towards the club room, since they were summoned by Kiba under the orders of Rias. Brian said, Defenders, be on your guard. As he looked over his teammates who nodded their heads in agreement as they walked inside of the club room. The defenders see Rias and the rest of her peerage with Sona, along with her peerage they're looking at the team who are on guard as they all enter the club room. The devils are looking at them with suspicion in their eyes which was mirrored by the defenders. Rhea said, it comes to my attention you have a new member in your group and I want to know her intentions. As she narrowed her eyes at Not Ali, who raised an eyebrow at Rias. Natalie said, from what I heard from Brian you are terrible protectors and you let fallen angels breach your territory not once but twice under your own noses. She was disgusted that Rias let few enemies breach her turf. Rias flinched and before she or the defenders could say anything the defenders all headed to the door, leaving the devil speechless, while Rias sigh in frustration at how she messed up again with the team, and she remembered being in the meeting with the devil leaders with Sona, about the failures of reporting the fallen angels. She recalled the meeting as intense as they were both scolded like children. Flashback, in the underworld, Rias and Sona were in a meeting with the four great satans in the meeting room, with the four great satans in their seats, looking at the standing forms of Rias and Sona, who have a guilty expression on both their faces with stony looks on the four great satans. The Duke of Beelzebub asked, Rias of House Gremory and Sona of House Citri, do you admit to allowing the fallen angels of breaching cow not once, but twice? He narrowed his eyes at the two heiresses standing in front of him and his fellow satans. Rhea said, yes Lord Beelzebub, but they were taken care of by the defenders. As she looks down in shame, as she couldn't look at her leaders or more importantly her brother Serzich's, who is sending her disappointing looks. 
the four great Satans gained an interesting look as they are very interested in the human vigilante group who has been gaining the attention of other supernatural factions for their skills and unique abilities. They recently heard that the defenders battled and defeated Riser Phoenix S. Peerage. Speaking of Riser, he cancelled his marriage with Rhea's Gremory to shock and happiness of Rhea's, who was relieved that she didn't need to marry Riser anymore. They learned the team got two new members in the form of Ravel Phoenix who is going by Phoenix, but the other member Black Widow is just like the founding members whose background is hidden from the devils. Scissorches wanted to get them as an alliance with the defenders, but he remembered being chewed out by Brian or Moon Knight about nothing being their attack dog which made Scissorch back off. Scissorch figures it's for the best they leave the defenders alone before they decide to join other factions. Albia Masmadia said, the defender's interesting dot as he strokes his chin in intrigue as he thought about the team. He was the most interested in the team because they are well trained and their abilities have gained his interest, but like the rest of his fellow Satans, he doesn't fully know anything about the defenders. He knows about Issei, Asia because they have sacred gears. Ravel because she is related to the Phoenix clan, but the others he is clueless about them. He wanted them to be part of his military in the underworld, but they turned it down. Seraph of Ithan said, Sona and Rias we need you to get info on the Defenders founding members' daughters, she wanted to know more about the founding members to see if they are good or bad guys. The two heiress gasps in shock, and they looked at each other because they are in deep water with the team especially Rias, as she tried to control them on many occasions, as she has gotten in contact with them. Sona wanted to leave them alone because one bad move will jeopardize their existence. Sona said, but Lady Leviathan they say they aren't a threat to us or the other factions. As she tries to argue with her older and childish sister, but she sees the stern look on her sister's face. Scissorch said, I know but we need to be sure that we can trust them to remain neutral, so I want you to find out about Black Widow, along with the founding members. As he didn't want to do but his people's paranoia is growing about a bunch of humans who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with supernaturals and on top that they don't answer two-on-one. Flashback over, Rhea's thought this is going to bite us on the ass dot as she takes a seat on the couch holding her forehead. Meanwhile, the defenders walking around town ready to go home until they stopped as they see two female figures walking. Issei's eyes widened when he saw one of the females walking which made Brian frown as he recognized the two females. One female is a beautiful young woman with violet eyes. She has long chestnut hair that is usually tied into twin tails, each held with a blue scrunchie dressed in aff, a black, skin-tight, short sleeve leotard with pauldrons, matching fingerless gloves that extend to her biceps, and thigh-high boots, all of which are adored with straps. On her arm was a string that made Brian narrowed his eyes at it. The second girl is a young woman with chin-length blue hair, with a dyed green fringe on the right side and brown eyes dressed in a black, skin-tight, short sleeve leotard with pauldrons, matching fingerless gloves that extend to her biceps and thigh-high boots, all of which are adorned with straps. Issei said, Irina Dodd as he looked at the newly named Irina who heard her name being called, and she saw Issei causing her to gasp in surprise. Irina said, Issei Dodd as he runs at Issei, and she hugs him tightly which Issei returned back. The girl asked, Irina who is this dot as she looked at the hugging childhood friends in confusion, but she saw Asia making her narrow her eyes in anger and disgust. The girl said, you as she points at Asia who jumped back in shock at the sudden change in emotion. Irina asked, Zenobia what's wrong as she stops hugging, and she sees Asia causing her to glare at Asia. Brian said, is there anything wrong here? Asia is a friend, and whatever problems are with Asia are null and void. As he crosses his arms over his chest and he narrowed his eyes at the female duo. Zenobia said, your friend here Asia Argento is a witch. She pointed to Asia who looked down sadly at being reminded of her past. Brian scowled and walked over to them until he felt Excalibur vibrate in his backpack, making him realize that another piece of Excalibur is near. Brian sees Arena's string vibrate, causing Arena to look down to see her is vibrating. Arena Brian thought, a piece of Excalibur is near. The two wielders looked at each other. Arena was shocked that a piece of the holy sword was in the grasp of the witch's friends. She sees Issei as apparently a friend of the witch's s friend to shock and disappointment. Irina said I expected better of Issei. You civilians surrender your piece of the holy sword and I will let you along with your friends including the witch go. She sneered at Asia, who looked like she wanted to burst into tears. Brian said, go fuck yourself, you self-righteous bitches. As he flips off the two girls, causing them to bristle in anger. Brian was about to say more, but Asia stepped forward to the shock of her friends. Asia said, you can judge me all you want, but I could care less about the opinions of a bunch of extremists like you two. As she scowls at the duo who looked offended by being called an extremist. Zenoiva said how dare you call us extremists. We proudly serve our lord. As she looked angry at the remark by Asia. She didn't see Ravel flinch in pain. Jeff said, a lord who will call picking family and friends over him a sin. If that isn't extremist then burns us. As he walked over to Asia's side which made the rest of the team walk over to Asia's side. 
Irina said, how dare you insult us and our lord dot as she is red in the face that her lord is being insulted. She didn't notice that Ravel flinches in pain. James said, you don't even know if he is alive or not dot as he gets a smirk on his face as he sees the duo is getting very angry. Zenoiva said, you have crossed the line civilian dot as she was ready to attack James. Marlin said, how about this? If you can answer our question and if you can provide a good answer we will surrender our peace. He smirks at the duo and he crosses his arms over his chest. His smirk got bigger as he saw the two girls nod their head smirk on their faces. Issei asked, if there was a god then why didn't help prevent the holocaust, racism, poverty, pointless wars from happening as he wanted to see if his old friend could provide an answer, he saw that Irina and Zinyova were trying to come up with answers. He sees Ravel is flinching in pain, making him send a quick apologetic look towards her. Brian said, typical religious extremist you shove your teaching down our throat and berate us for nothing believing in a being that doesn't give a single fuck about human life, but now we question you have no answers. As he shakes his head in disgust at the two girls who flinches back in fear after hearing the verbal dress down. Natalie said, you judge Asia and you judge us all. After hearing Asia's backstory she bonded with Asia along with Ravel becoming Asia's surrogate sisters. Natalie knows what it's like to be alone because in her old world she was an orphan who had nothing but her name along with the clothes on her back. Ravel said, me being a devil, but I can show more compassion than you humans towards Asia. As she scowls at the two females who gained a shocked look but it morphs into a disgusted look as they stare at Ravel in hatred. Irina said, filthy devil. She moved towards Ravel, but she was stopped by Issei, who pointed his guns at her abdomen to Irina's shock. Issei said, you fuck with her, you fuck with all of us dadas, he gives Irina a massive scowl as he pointed the gun at the abdomen of his childhood friend. Little did they know in another realm that was a barren wasteland with a throne and sitting on a stone throne was a tall dark silhouette that looks like Onslaught, but the shadow hid in his appearance revealing his red eyes as he stares at the image of the defenders. The figure hears the sound of a door being open, causing him to move his eyes away from the screen to see a male figure with long black hair wearing a retractable mask, and he is dressed in a silver suit with black lining and boots with gold belt and collar with a black cape. The figure walks towards the throne, and he bows towards the figure sitting on the throne. The shadowy figure said, Ah General Warpath you here. I need you to do me a favor. Dot, as he looked at his general. Warpath asked, What do you ask of me, my lord? Dot, as he kept bowing towards his master. The shadowy figure said, I want you to go to the world where the Christian god is dead, along with the devil. As points to the image of the defenders, making Warpath grin under his mask. Warpath said, Yes, my lord. But what will I be retrieving? As he looked up at his red eyes for an answer to his mission for his lord. The shadowy figure said, I want you to gather all the pieces of the sword Excalibur for me. As he shows images of the pieces of Excaliburs. Warpath asked, Yes, my lord, but what about the Avengers? As he recalled his lord telling him about the Avengers who are currently traveling the multiverse. The shadowy figure said, forget about the Avenger and besides they are dealing with Frost. Think of this mission of congratulations on successfully conquering three other universes, along with destroying them. As he made Warpath beam with pride under his mask. Warpath said, thank you my lord and I will not fail you. Dot as he gets to leave, but he turns around to look his lord. Warpath asked, shall I gather my army as he looked at his lord, but he see his lord give him a nod. The shadowy figure said, kill as much as your heart demands, and if the defenders get your way then kill them. As he summons a portal for Warpath to walk through. Chapter 10. In the park near the school, the defenders along with the two girls are on the grass, but Brian and Issei were on the grass staring at the two girls, while the rest of the defenders are on the sidelines. The two girls have on a white hooded cloak with gold and blue accents. Arena said, hear the deal if you win I will surrender my piece of Excalibur to you, but if we win you will give up your sword. As she smirks at the two male defenders in front of her in the park. Brian said, works for me. As he reaches for his sword Excalibur blessing from his backpack and he throws his back to the side of the grass. Issei said, sacred gear. As he summons his sacred gear on his arm. The two girls throw off their cloaks, revealing their church attire underneath it, along with their respective weapons. Zenoiva's weapon is a uniquely shaped broadsword with a blue blade and a golden edge. The sword has a semicircular guard on the left side of the handle that extends to the bottom just above the pommel, with a small extension on the right side of the handle. Arena's weapon is what caught the defender's attention as it is a katana with a round gold guard and a long enough grip making it a two-handed blade. Brian knew what it is from a mile away, and it is Excalibur Mimic. Arena said, so that Excalibur blessing. The church is going to be happy that I found another piece of Excalibur. She looked at Brian's sword in his hand in awe with a smirk on her face. Brian said, don't get cocky miss self-proclaimed Victor. As he lets a smirk spread across his faces as he saw Arena scowl in anger, making Zinivo a chuckle lightly but frowns. The two sides dashed at each other while the team looked on as their teammates charged at the two members of the church. 
Irina went towards Issei, while her partners Inyova towards Brian with her sword ready as she charges at Brian. Irina runs at Issei with her sword, but Issei's gem gauntlet glows and places the gauntlet hand in front of him, causing a red circular disc that appeared in front of the gauntlet. Irina slashed at it causing sparks to fly off the shield. The defender looked shocked at Issei's shield along with the two girls. Def said, he made a shield dot as he looked at Issei's shield in awe. James said, incredible dot as he looked impressed at it, along with letting out a whistle. Marlin said, amazing dot as he nodded his head at his teammate's weapon. Asia asked, how did he create a weapon like that? As she looked at the shield in wonder as it held the sword in place. Not all he said, it almost similar to Captain America's shield dot as she looked at the shield with her teammates. Ravel said, I never seen anything like that dot as she looked at the shield with interest. Issei smirked as he thought about how got the idea for his shield, but he must thank his teammates from other worlds for telling him about the heroes along with their weapons. He decided to meet with the dragon to discuss creating weapons similar to the heroes. Zenivo and Brian were locked in an intense sword fight as Zenivo went for multiple thrusts, but Brian parried all of them. Zenivo went to stab her blade in the ground, but it was blocked by Brian's Excalibur blessing, and he seeps her legs, causing her to fall on her back. Zenyova looks up only to see the blade of Axlachlor blessing pointed at her neck, and she looks up at Brian who narrowed his eyes at her, causing her to shiver in fear. She sees her sword is nearby, but Brian kicks it away from her making her gulp in fear. Brian said, submit Dodd as he presses his sword to the throat of Zenyova. Back with Issei who is defending against Arena strikes with his shield, and he summons one of his guns to fire a shot at Arena, but Arena slices the bullet in half. Arena tries to slash at Issei, but he brings up his shield. Issei asked, you know what this reminds me of Arena as he defends against the strikes from Arena with a smirk on his face. Arena said, the times we used to play fight Dada's, she remembered the times where she and Issei would play fight when they were younger. She goes for a diagonal slash, but it was blocked the shield of Issei. Issei said, yes. Why did you leave Kuo Arena? We were friends and you are with the church Dot as he wanted to know why his childhood friend left. Arena said, the church called my family back for my training Issei Dot as she sighs as she had to leave behind her friend while she went to go train at the church. She tries to slash at Issei again, but Issei blocks with his shield. Issei aims his gun at Arena's left foot and fired a causing Arena to slice the bullet in half, then she charges at Issei, who had his shield up and ready to block, but before Arena could attack Rias, along with her peerage showed up in the middle of the grass looking urgent. Rias said, stop fighting Dot as she looked at the fighters. Brian asked, what is it now Grimory as he still held the blade towards Zinbio's neck while he looked at Rias who now have a glare. Rias said, you are fighting members of the church. As she points to the girl's outfits trying to get the two defenders members to see reason. Rias paled as she saw Arena having one of Excalibur in Arena's hand, making her turn towards Kiba to see he is shaking violently, making her even paler. Kiba said, th that sword is Excalibur dot as his hair shadows his face until he activates his sacred gear sword birth. The swords appeared before causing the rest of Rhea's peerage to panic, while the defenders got in his way making Kiba grit his teeth. Kiba said, get out of my way dot as he grabs one of his swords, but the defenders wouldn't budge making him scowl. Rhea's ordered, Kiba stand down dot as she gives her knight a stern look causing Kiba to look back in disbelief, then he scowls, but he deactivates his sacred gear, causing his swords to vanish. Rhea said, defenders we need to and it about the holy swords dot as got the team's attention along with the two girls' attentions as they perked up at the mention of the swords. A few minutes later everyone in the club room with Rhea's peerage and they are looking at the heiress of Grimory family waiting for her to tell them about the holy swords. Kiba who hair is covering his face is calm on the outside, but on the inside, he is seething in rage. Rhea said I received words that Kakabiel the fallen angel has stolen holy swords from the church. She see her peerage horrified look with Ravel who is equally fearful. Asia shivered at thought of a fallen angel having multiple holy swords. Kiba said, what are we waiting for? Let's stop Kakabiel and destroy those swords. As he gets up from his seat with anger look. Rhea said, Kiba sit down now. As she gives Kiba a stern look along with pointing to his seat making Kiba growl. Kiba tried to walk to the door, but he punched by Issei gauntlet covered fist, causing him to slump to the ground unconscious. Everyone stared at Issei who rolled eyes at Kiba, and he glares at Kiba, then he went to pick Kiba up. He put Kiba back on his seat and he see everyone is looking at him. Issei muttered, damn emo pretty boy dot as he went back to his seat and he see his teammates are chuckling in amusement. Rhea said, as I was saying he stole in the holy swords and he is very dangerous dot as she shudders at thought of the fallen angel using one of the holy swords against her people. Arena said, interesting, but we got a mission to do and we will retrieve the holy swords from the fallen angel, so don't interfere devils. As she and her partners get up from their seats and they headed out the door of the club room leaving Rias along with her peerage and the defenders. 
Bria said, defenders I ask you to stay out of this dot as she gives the team a pleading look, but the team shook their heads, no making her sigh. Brian said, Grimory Kakabiel has three fragments of Excalibur and he is a threat to the humans. We can't allow this menace linger around here and you may be terrible protectors, but we aren't going to allow this to happen Grimory. As he stands up from his seat along with his teammates. The next day the defenders along with the two exorcists are looking at Kakabiel's base with narrowed eyes, as well as the determination of stopping Kakabiel from starting another war with the factions. The reason why the two exorcists are working with the team because well it a funny story. Flashback, Irina and Zinyova were on the street begging for money due to Irina, having already spent all their wages which made Zinyova facip them an annoyance. So far they got a couple of yen from some charitable people. Zinyova said, I can't believe you spent all our wages, Irina dot as she looked at Irina with an angry scowl on her face, she see Irina holding her hands up in defense. She along Irina hear footsteps causing them to turn around to see it was Brian with a say in Asia. Zinyova said, what do you want which sympathizer as she crosses her arms as she gives the trio a look of disgust. Brian said, calm down Xenia we just here to talk dot as he gives Zinyova and Irina a sour look. Zinyova asked, what there to talk about as she wanted the trio to leave her and Irina alone. Brian said, we can help you with stopping Kakabiel along with getting the other fragments dot as he waits for Zinyova and Irina to give their answer, but he frowns when they both laughs at him making a say and Asia scowl. Brian asked, you done as he was tempted to leave them alone on the streets begging for money, but he was begged by a say to get Irina along with Zinyova on their side. Zinyova said, no dot as she continued laughing at Brian along with Irina, but now they are both calming down. Irina said, now we are. We are trained members of the church and you along with your friends, nothing but a bunch civilian excluding the devil along with the witch. As she smirks at the trio. Zinyova said, yeah you and Issei over have two supernatural weapons, but other than that you guys wouldn't last long against Kakabiel Dadas, she smirks smugly at the trio. Brian asked, have you heard of the defenders he smirks, as he see the two looks of interest, making him smirk as he begins to tell the exorcist about him and his teammates. Flashback over, Irina thought I can't believe that Issei is a part of the defenders as she looked at Issei or Red Draco, as he is wearing his suit as he monitors the surroundings of the base. Their leader Mitchell told them about a group of humans who fight crimes in the human world, but also fight supernatural creatures which made him both happy and curious about them, but he drops the matter as he is worried about maintaining peace in heaven. But they are shocked that they are working with them, but they are shocked that Asia is a member of the team. Zinyova said, I can't believe you would dress like a devil Murdoch dot as she looked at Daredevil's costume in disgust. Daredevil said, you can't join any Miss Stripper dot as he looked at Zinyova's outfit, making her sputter in shock and anger. Asia said, as much as I like hearing Daredevil making fun of Zinyova's outfit, we need to focus on the objective dot as she holds back a chuckle of seeing Zinyova being angry. Moon Knight said, we need to break into teams dot as he begins to form the pairs. Moon Knight said, Daredevil you're with Black Widow and Punisher dot as he see three nodded their heads in approval. Moon Knight said, Phoenix you're with Iron Fist and Arena dot as the trio reluctantly nodded their heads. Moon Knight said, Red Draco, Mockingbird, Zinyova you're with me. As Red Draco and Mockingbird nodded, but Zinyova looked angry. Zinyova asked, why do I have to team up with the witch as she points towards Asia who has a scowl on her face. Moon Knight said, unless you want to go in alone then shut up bitch. For someone who is taught how to forgive and accept another person, you are being very prejudiced dot as he said the word prejudice with venom, making Zinyova and Arena flinch. The teams went their separate ways, and inside of the base freed cells and was holding a sword as shaped like a long criss, the blade appears wide with a diamond-shaped gap through it and spikes on both edges. This is Excalibur rapidly one of the three fragments that were stolen from the church. Freed said, soon we will have all the other swords fragments dot as he looked at the sword with a crazed look in his eyes. Freed let out a cry in pain as he was hit from behind by something that sticks in his back. Freed yelled, who fucking hit me? Come out, cowards as he turns around only to get kicked in the face by a white boot from Moon Knight. Moon Knight growled, Freed we meet again dot as he narrowed his eyes at the deranged exorcist. Freed said, you costume wearing bastard, and I see you are alone which works for me dot as he readies his sword, but he felt something pierce his back, causing him to turn around to see it, was Arena, with Mimic stabbed in his back. Arena said, surrender the fragments or else dot as she narrowed her eyes at Freed who just laughed off the pain. Freed wrenches the sword out of his back, then he backhands Arena sending her crashing into the wall. Freed laughs evilly as he held Exclobber Mimic in his hands, but he didn't see the rest of the team coming out of their hiding spot surrounding him. Freed stops laughing, and he growls some of the familiar members, but he gave Leech look towards three members of the team, along with Zinwaiva. Freed said, after I kill you costume wearing freaks I am going to have fun with your lady's friends daughters, he sticks his tongue out of his mouth, making the team look disgusted at what the excorset is implying. 
a new figure enters the scene, and the form was a short bespectacled elderly man with grey hair, a moustache, black eyes, who wore a priest outfit. He was carrying three things in his hand that made the team along with the two excretists looks in shock and horror. In the man hand was two swords, but not just any two swords, it was Excalibur nightmare and transparency making the defender, and the two exorcists narrowed their eyes. Excalibur blessing begins to glow making everyone snap their gaze at the sword as it glows. Excalibur blessing floats in the air, causing the other fragments to glow as well, along with float with Excalibur blessing, making everyone curious to see what going to happen. The spirit of Excalibur's blessing appeared in the form of a blue orb. The orb said, I am Excalibur, and I will not allow the fragments to be used for evil any longer. As the fragments begin to fuse together creating a blinding light that blinded everyone. The light vanishes and Moon Knight felt something was in his hand, making him look at his hand to see it was a sword that looked like Makai Knight Garo's sword. Moon Knight's teammates and the two exorcists look at the blade in awe, while the two enemies look at the sword in angry. Breed said, you stole my swords you white costume wearing battered's dot as he reaches for his sword light, but he was shot in the head by Punisher, who held a glock in his hand that has smoke coming out of the barrel. Punisher said, shut the fuck up you freak of nature dot as he watches as Freed falls to the floor dead with a hole in his head. The old man dressed in a priest looked terrified and he tried to run away, but he was shot in the legs by Red Draco. Everyone surrounded the old man, and they all glared at the old man, making him gulp in fear. Moon Knight said, talk dot as he glared at the old man. The old man asked, what do you want to know as he wanted to live and get out of here before they kill him. Arena said, normally we would ask for a name, but we know who you are Valper Galilee dot as she looked down at the old man whose eyes widened in shock. Moon Knight demanded, tell us your involvement with the fallen angel dot as he points the sword blade at Valper's throat. Valper gulped and he begins telling about his involvement with Kakabiel, but he also told them about his own little experiment called the Holy Sword Project, which where they experimented on children which made the whole team disgusted, but everyone excluding Moon Knight froze in when they heard the name of Kibuto being mentioned as one of the victims. Valper said, Michiel more human than me. as he shrugged his shoulder nonchalantly. Moon Knight said, tell us where is Kakabiel. as he presses the bade deeply in the throat of Valper, making the old man flinch. Valper said, he is going to Kuo Academy to take out the Grimmery Eris, along with the Citria Eris. As he touches his throat trying to loosen the blade pressure. Arena asked, why is he going to kill them as she wanted as well everybody else except Moon Knight, who knows why Kakabiel would kill the Eris. Valper said, to stop another war with the factions. As, he hopes the answer satisfied the team, and Moon Knight removes blade making Valper sigh in relief, but he was shot in the head by Red Draco. The old man falls flat on his back looking up with a lifeless gaze with a bullet hole in his head. Meanwhile back at the academy Rias and her peerage are currently in a battle against a young man with long black hair and red eyes, and unlike other fallen angels, Kakabiel has pointy ears. He is dressed in a black robe with detailed accessories, and he has five pairs of black wings. This is Kakabiel one of the co-founders of Grigori, and he is here to kill Rias along with Sona to start another war with the three factions. He looks down to see that the Grimmery heiress and her peerage are on their last legs, making him smirk evilly. The Kabiel said, I expected more from the younger sister of 1-4 Satan and the heiress of the Grimroy clan. As he looked down at the peerage with a mocking look and he begins to conjure multiple light spears. Hey, freak show. The Kabiel and the peerage turned around to see the defenders, along with the two exorcists glaring at Kakabiel, making him chuckle in amusement as he see the teams, while Rias along with her peerage looked at the team with a shocked expression on their faces. The Kabiel said, so the defenders are here. Wonderful and I hope you put up more of a challenge than this pitiful excuse of a devil. Dot as he pointed at Rias and her peerage, who scowled at the remark made by Kakabiel. Moon Knight said, as much as I hate to say this, but we will assist Gremory in dealing with you. Dot as he scowls as he see Rias and her peerage perked up at what Moon Knight said. Moon Knight and his team along with Zinyova and Arena went over to where Rias and her peerage are at. Moon Knight said, hey Udo, I have some good news. Dot as he looked at the Knight of the Grimmery S. Peerage, who raised an eyebrow in interest. Red Draco said, Valper Gaite is dead. Dot as he smirks under his helmet as he saw Kiba's eyes widen in shock, but Red Draco see Kiba scowls at the team. Kiba said, you took my only chance at revenge. Kiba was about to attack the team, but he see the spurts of his friend surrounding, then they begin to form into a sword. The Sword of Betrayer. Kibba looks at the sword in awe, and he felt the light from his friends infused with his balance breaker sword birth. He looks at them and the exorcists with a grateful look on his face, but he gets serious as he see Kakaba lands to the ground. The Kabiel said, I see you managed to get my fragments and merge them with your fragment Moon Knight. As he looked at Moon Knight's sword with a smirk on his face, and he looks at the Defenfers who has the two excorset along with Rhea's peerage, all scowling at him. Not gonna die by skillet, Moon Knight said, Defender Unite. As they all charges a Kakabiel who just stood with a smirk on his face. 
the Kabil fights off against Sinyova and Kiba, who are both using their swords to slash at, but their blades are being blocked by the light sword mate Kakabil, but he wasn't prepared for the lighting strike from Akeno from above, or the bullets coming from the Punishers and Red Draco. The Kabil said, ah you will pay for that human's dot as he is slightly damaged to his left side, and before he could attack he was hit by Rhea's and Phoenix's respected family magic. He was blown away from the impact, and he lands at the feet of Mockingbird, Arena, Black Widow, and Punishers. The heroes pulled out guns making Kakabia look in fear, but he covers himself with his wings which turned into steel, making the bullets bounce off his making the shooter frustrated, causing the fallen angel to let out a mocking laugh. Iron Fist charges at the fallen angel with his glowing fist with Konkyohu. The two fists shattered the steel wings, causing a shockwave to send Kakabiel stumbling back, leaving his back as exposed. Daredevil goes for a two-punch to the face of Kakabiel making spit fly out of Kakabiel's mouth. Moon Knight see an opening and charges at Kakabiel's back. Moon Knight takes his blade and stabbed it through Kakabiel's back, making the fallen angel gasp in shock and pain, along with blood coming out of his mouth. Kakabiel falls to his knees, and Moon Knight pulls the blade out from the back, along with watching Kakabiel fall to his knees holding his chest. The cable asked, how did I lose you to likes you as he stares up at Moon Knight, who is looking down at him with his fellow defender, along with his temporary allies. Before Moon Knight could respond a dark portal opens up behind and out of the portal was Warpath, who gained the attention everyone along with a hidden person, was secretly watching the battle with interest, but they were happy when Kakabel got stabbed in the back making their job easier, but they saw a new player enter. They thought this got to be interesting dot as they watched the figure who walked out of the portal, and they are curious about which faction he came from. Orpath said, thank you for softening him up for me mortals. As he grabbed Kakibal by the neck, tightly making Kakabiel wince in pain. The hidden person decided it's time to come out to retrieve Kakabal. Moon Knight asked, who are you and what are your intentions? He is getting a sinking feeling from the being holding Kakabiel by the neck, and he looks at his comrades to see that he isn't the only one, as they are narrowing his eyes at the being. I want to know as well. Everyone looked for the source of the voice until they saw a figure walking towards the being, and they saw a handsome young man with dark silver hair dressed in a dark green v-neck shirt with a high-colored black leather jacket over it. He also wears burgundy jeans with a silver chain drooping down over them, and black leather chaps with three bands encircling his right calf, and black shoes with black buckles. Orpath said, Ah Vali Lucifer descendant of the true Lucifer Dottie, sounded intrigued that a descendant of the original devil is here, but he didn't see some of the heroes excluding Brian eyes widened in surprise. Bali said, so you know interesting, but I can't leave without Kakabiel Dodd as he pointed to the downed rogue fallen angel, because he was ordered by Azazel to retrieve Kakabiel to face punishment for his treason. Orpath said, you can have what left of him when I am done. As he crosses his arms arrogantly at Bali making Bali scowl at him. Bali said, bastard Dodd is a pair of white dragon wings on his back making some spectator especially red Draco jaw drop. Bali flies at Warpath, and Warpath grabs him by neck holding him in place to everyone's shock. Orpath said, time to teach you some manner bitch boy. As he caused Vali to scowl at being called bitch boy. Warpath then summons a sword out of thin, and it made everyone narrow their eyes at it. The sword looks like Excalibur Morgan from the Fate series, and it had a dark aura around it, making everyone feel uneased. Warpath stabs his sword in the left wing of Vali, causing Vali to let out a scream in pain, and everyone else notices that his sacred gear is disappearing until it completely vanishes. Orpath said, now time to put you out, boy. Warpath releases dark energy the engulf Vali, causing him to scream in pain. Warpath watches as the energy renders Vali unconscious, and Warpath drops Vali like a sack of potatoes. Biba dashes with his new sword betrayer aimed at Warpath's chest and was about to drive the sword through, but one slash from Warpath's sword shattered betrayer to million pieces, causing the spirits of Kiba's friends to scream in pain. Warpath punches Kiba hard which sent him flying and crashing to the ground. Warpath see the cockable is trying to crawl away causing Warpath teleport in front of him, making the fallen angel look up at him in fear. Warpath takes his sword and quickly chops the head of Kakaiabalal off allowing the head to roll off the shoulder, making some of the devils, along with the two exorcist puke. Warpath said, see this kitty? I am beyond your level, and I want the fragments of the sword for my lord. I will not fail him. Dot as he growled at the team and the devils. Moon Knight asked, who are you as he looked at the being hoping to get an answer this time. Warpath said, my name is Warpath and if I don't get what I want I will declare war on this universe. So, Brian Johnson of Earth 83, I will and along with your team time to think, but when time runs out well, let just say I will go on a Warpath. As he made a little joke that he found funny enough to chuckle. Warpath summons a portal and he walks through it. Rhea said, you got some explaining to do defenders. As she gives the team a stern look. Chapter 11, Flashback, Warpath see the cockable is trying to crawl away causing Warpath teleport in front of him, making the fallen angel look up at him in fear. 
Warpath takes his sword and quickly chops the head of Kakaya Balil off allowing the head to roll off the shoulder, making some of the devils, along with the two exorcists puke. Warpath said, see this kitty? I am beyond your level, and I want the fragments of the sword for my lord. I will not fail him dot as he growled at the team and the devils. Moon Knight asked, who are you as he looked at the being hoping to get an answer this time. Warpath said, my name is Warpath and if I don't get what I want I will declare war on this universe. So, Brian Johnson of Earth 83, I will and along with your team time to think, but when time runs out well, let just say I will go on a warpath. As he made a little joke that he found funny enough to chuckle. Warpath summons a portal and he walks through it. Rhea said, you got some explaining to do defenders. As she gives the team a stern look. Flashback over, the defenders are sitting in the occult room with Rhea's along with her peerage and the two exorcists looking at the team. Rhea's demanded, I want answers defenders, and I want them now. As she glowered down at the team. Moon Knight asked, what do you want to know Grimory as he leaned back in his seat. Rhea said, background now. As she crosses her arms with narrowed eyes at Moon Knight, who sighs then takes off his mask. Moon Knight said, well Grimory it's a long story. As he looks at Rhea's with a tired look. Meanwhile, in the underworld, the three factions leaders are currently fighting tall bespectacled woman with a voluptuous figure. She had tan skin with long brown hair tied into a bun with a headset, and she had purple eyes. She wore an extremely low-cut dress, and it had a high slit which exposed a large portion of her breasts. This is Kateria Leviathan, one of the three leaders of the old Satan faction, and she is here to kill two of the current great Satans, but as is a leader of the fallen angel factions, is helping the two against Kateria. Kateria declared, once you all are dead I will bring chaos to the world. As she let maniacal laughter. Her laughter then transforms into a gagging sound as she looks down to see a blade sticking out of her chest. The two devils and fallen angel were taken back by C. Kateria, but she falls face forward to the floor, revealing the person that stabbed her was Warpath, who is holding his version of Excalibur in his hand. Warpath said, hello devils and fallen angel. As he see the shocked expression of the three S faces. Seraph of Leviathan demanded, who are you as she prepares her magic just in case making Warpath laugh at her. Warpath said, your puny feeble magic is nothing to me devil dot as he smirked underneath his mask. Serzich's Lucifer said, stated your business. Dot as he looked at Warpath with narrowed eyes. Warpath said, I, Warpath on behalf of my lord, I am declaring war against your universe. Dot as he points at the three who all looked confused. Warpath summoned a portal making the three leaders. The three looked at each other with a worried expression on their faces as they thought about what Warpath stated to them that war is coming. On the day Brian was sitting in class with a tired look as he sits in the classroom with a bored look on his face. Brian was up all night with his team as they were looking for Warpath since he is at large. Brian thought Grimory got her info on us, but she is leaving us alone. Dot as he struggles to stay awake. The students hear the bell ring causing them to rush out of class in a hurry, making the teacher sigh in frustration. Brian is walking with his hands in his pocket until he saw his friends coming out of their respective classes with tired looks. Brian asked, ready to go guys as he see his friend's teammates nodded, but he missed Asia's blushing face. Brian. The team turned around to see Rhea's running towards them with a look of fear on her faces, making the team curious. Rhea said, I need your help. As she gestures for the team to follow her to the occult room. Meanwhile, on Asgard, the Asgardians were being attacked by Warpath. Warpath was fighting Loki who was wounded in every part of his body. Warpath said, weakling. As he uses Exclobber to absorb the weakened god into his sword, and he files ups in the air with a smirk. Warpath said, no this is Guardians I declared not only you but the whole world, and the only is out of this war, is to give me what my lord wants. As he summoned a portal and he walked through leaving the decimated as Guardians. In the crowd of soldiers an elderly man with long, grey hair, and a matching beard. He wears a gold and white monocle over his left eye, without the addition of the chain dressed in a robe, which is short and blue with a gold lining on the top and bottom of the collar, the sleeves of the robe, and at the front of his robes, all the way down to the bottom of the robe. The rest of his robe is white with matching shoes. The old man scowled as Warpath vanishes then a beautiful young woman with long, straight silver hair and aqua colored eyes, who appears to be in her late teens, dressed in a set of Valkyrie armor, which consists of a white breastplate with gold and pale blue accents and matching, fingerless gauntlets, boots, hip guards, and wing-shaped hair clips. She also wears a black leotard underneath her breastplate, black thigh-high stockings, and a pale blue cloth wrapped underneath her hip guards, all of which are clad with pink lacing, along with her hair clips. The girl asked, my lord what do we do now as she looked at the older man with a look of fear and confusion. The older man said, we are going to Midgard now. Dot as he looked back at the girl who has a stunned look. The girl asked, my lord why are we going to the mortal realm Lord Odin as she titled her head at Odin who has a scowl. Odin said, war is coming. Dot as he sees the decimated land of Asgard and he doesn't wish a fate on anyone. The devils, fallen angel, angel factions are going to be tricky to convince making Odin sigh. 
Back on Earth in the occult room, the four Satans with Sona followed by her peerage along with Azariel, the leader of the fallen angel faction making a say, narrow his eyes at him, but there were some unfamiliar faces in the room as well. One of the new figures has the appearance of a handsome looking man with long blonde hair and green eyes. Like Azazel, he has 12 wings growing from his back, and unlike other angels whose wings are white, his wings are colored gold, further symbolizing his position as the former leader. He wears a red robe with a gold cross on the front of his white alb. He has golden shoulder plates with a white sash and a golden halo set above his head. The team notices that Irina and Zinyova are standing next to him, but the team notices that they have angel wings. The say thought Irina became an angel dot as he looked at his childhood friend as shocked and wonder. The other new figure is a handsome young man with short black hair and blue eyes. He wears a combination of a Japanese school uniform and ancient Chinese attire. The young man is looking at the defenders with a look of glee. Serzich's Lucifer said, good you are all here dot as see the team is in the occult room, and he stands up from the couch. Brian asked, what the problem as he looked at Serzich's Lucifer who has a serious look on his face. Serzich's Lucifer said, a being called Warpath has declared war on us, and we need your help in stopping him dot as, he sounded very serious about the situation. The team looked at each other for a moment until the angel man let out a gasp as he saw Asia with the team causing him to step forward. Asia shows him and she scowls at him causing the angel to pause in shock. Asia growled Mitchell. Asia remembered the face of the man that exiled her unjustly from the church. Mitchell asked Asia how you been as he tries to start a conversation with the former nun. Asia said coldly you banished me remember? I have nothing to say to you dot as she sent a scowl toward Mitchell who flinched. Mitchell insisted, but Asia forgive and forget dot as he pleaded with Asia to listen to him. Asia said, easy for an immortal to say dot as she narrowed her eyes at Mitchell, making him look down in shame. Ao Kao said, I like you already dot as he looked amused that Asia insulted Mitchell. Brian asked, who are you as he looked at the Chinese man with narrowed eyes. Ao Kao said, I am Cao Cao of the Hero Faction, and I would like to extend an invitation to you all to join the Hero Faction. As he offered the team a bright smile on his face making the team raise an eyebrow. Def stated, I speak for everyone we pass on that offer dot as he crosses his chest as senses that Cao Cao is angry. Before Cao Cao could say anything Aden and Roswasai's appeared in a flash of golden lights, making everyone stand on guard. Aden stated, hold your fire we come in peace for we have a common enemy dot as, he raises his left hand up to show he means no harm. Serzich's Lucifer said, we need to prepare for Warpath dot as he made everyone nodded in approval. Everyone hears a loud banging sound coming outside of the school, making everyone rush to the window to see to the horror it was Warpath firing energy beams at the school. They see the students and teachers running out of school. Brain said, time to suit up dot as he looked over at his friends who nodded and they all ran out of the room to change. Outside Warpath was in the air admiring the destruction as he sees several destroyed buildings, but he sees several spells headed to him, causing him to swat them like it was nothing. He sees Serzich's Lucifer along with his fellow Satans, Azrael, Aden with Rasu, Michiel with several of Angels, and Cao Cao with the rest of his hero faction. Warpath said, weaklings dot as he charges up Excalibur Morgan, causing it to release a purple ray at the heroes, making them jump out of the way. How about US? Warpath sees the defenders with Rias, Sona, and their peerage with Arena and Zinyova all looking at Warpath, making Warpath chuckle in amusement as he floats down to the ground. Warpath looks down at Excalibur Morgan to see it is vibrating, making Warpath look at Moon Knight's Excalibur. Warpath said you have something, my lord desired mortal, you will surrender your sword now dot as he points at Moon Knight, who narrowed his eyes at the being. Moon Knight said, you have to it from my cold dead hands Warpath dot as he enters his fighting stance. Warpath asked, how about we do a one-on-one -on -one dot as he flies to the center of the battlefield, making the heroes look taken back. Moon Knight said, works for me dot as he was about to walk over to the battlefield, but he was stopped by Mockingbird, causing Moon Knight to look back to see his teammates, along with Asia looking at him with a fearful expression. Mockingbird said Brian you can't fight him alone. Think about it we outnumber him. As she tries to get her crush to listen. Asia looks over at the rest of the team who are nodding their heads in agreement. Moon Knight said, I can take him Asia believe in me dot as he tries to get Asia and half of the team to listen to him. Daredevil stated, you are fighting a godlike being Brian and we need to fight together. As he tries to get his oldest friend to listen to reason. Iron Fist said, it will be suicide of fighting him one on one. As he thought about the situation as he offers his input. Brian said pointedly, so is giving Warpath Excalibur for his lord dot as he gives his counter argument. Punisher said, let him fight dot as finally speaks gaining all eyes on him. Are you crazy? He will die. Brian will not fight him alone. Punisher said, enough. Brian has proven time and time again that he can make the impossible happen. Dot as he pointed, remembering the impossible feats done by Brian. Moon Knight said, I can beat him. Dot as he see the team is in deep thought until they all nodded their heads at Brian. 
Mockingbird said, fine, but before you go into battle. She pulled up Brian's mask up to a quarter to his eyes to kiss him on the lips to the surprise of the team along with their allies. Mockingbird pulls out and she gives Moon Knight a smirk. Mockingbird stated, go kick his ass dot as she winks at Moon Knight who regrouped mentally, then he pulled down his mask. Moon Knight said, I will dot as he walks to the center of the battlefield and he see Warpath looking at Mockingbird with a leering look. Warpath mocked, you got yourself a cute girl, and when you die here I will take her as my queen dot as he hopes to get under Moon Knight's skin. Moon Knight didn't say anything, but he narrowed his eyes at Warpath who grinned underneath his mask. Warpath charges at Moon Knight who also charges at him and Warpath go for thrust, but it was blocked by Moon Knight. Moon Knight launches several Moon Crescent daggers at him, but they were slashes by Warpath. Warpath said, pathetic. As he fires an energy blast at Moon Knight who jumped over at. Moon Knight said said the guy who kills people from behind Dada's, he see Warpath bristles in anger making Moon Knight. Warpath said, you die now boy as he charges at Moon Knight who nodded to his team who jumped near him. Moon Knight yelled, defenders untied Dot as he and his team charge at Warpath who is scowling at him. Warpath said, coward Dot as he files at the team, but Iron Fist uses his Kai to punch Warpath in the face, shattering his mask. Warpath's face is revealed showing the heroes the faces of Warpath who have blue eyes with a beard. Warpath scowls at the team, but he was hit from behind by Odin and his Valkyrie, causing him to let out a scream in pain. The devils started hitting him with a respective family magic making Warpath scream in pain, but Moon Knight quickly stabs Warpath in the chest, causing Warpath to let out a gagging sound as he falls to his side, along with dropping his sword. Warpath asked, how can I lose to you all as he looks up weakly at the heroes with rage and confusion. Warpath summons a portal underneath him which allowed him to escape making everyone scowl. Moon Knight said, damn it he got away dot as he scowls at the closed portal. In another location in an old abandoned lab of some kind a portal opens up and out came Warpath who is bleeding to death. Warpath see a figure in the darkness standing there looking at him. The figure said, so I take that you failed dot as he looks at the being figure laying in a pool of blood. The figure steps out revealing a male that looks like Mr. Sinister from the Wolverine and his men cartoon. Warpath moaned, Ezekiel dot as felt his blood coming out of his body. The figure said Martin Ezekiel is dead and only Mr. Sinister remains. As he went to the injured general. Mr. Sinister stated, if it makes you feel any better, Frost also failed in his mission and you were expected to fail because your lord wanted to see how strong are the heroes. As he looks down at Warpath. Back at Brian's apartment Asia and Brian were alone in the living room sitting on the couch in silence. Asia thought I have to tell him dot as she stares at Brian in silence and she begins forming words in his head. Brian asks so about that kiss. As he breaks the silence and begins to look at Asia. Asia said I wanted to motivate you to win against Warpath. As she tries to avoid telling her feelings. Brian stated, Asia you are a bad liar. As he felt a smile grew on his face as he saw Asia blush. Asia said you got me, Brian, I like you, and I mean like like you because you other than the team treated me with kindness and respect. These feelings grew when I saw you are willing to protect the innocent from danger. As she looked at Brian with a loving look. Brian said, Asia I am not going to lie I have feelings for you for your kindness for another life. As he clasps her hand making Asia face heat up. Asia asked, do you accept my feeling as she waits for answers and she sees Brian smirk coyly at her. Brian said, maybe this can answer your question. As he pulls Asia in for a kiss, making Asia squeak in surprise. Moon Knight and the defenders will return. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.